back into it. Exactly. Guys, welcome. Rule Zero, the hap, hap, happiest afternoon. All dudes, all the time. Definitely no homo show around. Who do we got today? John's on his way in. Carl from Black Label Logic making the rare appearance back with the team. We got MZ Tomasi. Oh, that's right. That's your that's your Kenyan tribal name, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> tribal name. No, it's like it's kind of like just a formal like a formal title. It's kind of like in in Spanish. I like they call you ustedes. You know. Oh, mm, clever. And then we got Troy and myself on the battle for who's got the best shirt. <laughs> well, it's what obviously me. It's obviously me, isn't it? Shirt, exactly. yeah, or, or something else. It's, it's obviously me, isn't it? But I, I've been getting a lot of heat recently in the comments for these leopard print shirts. I'm getting a lot of hate, and I think people don't realize how badly that can affect a yeah. content creator. So I think, I think you know, this is this is an issue that needs to be raised. I think. Well, like that's very math. Do you know how many 45 year old ladies you've had to hunt to be able to carry wear their skins as a shirt? <laughs> exactly. I don't know. Exactly. When I see Troy's, when I see Troy's shirt, all I can think is Peggy Bundy, man. Oh, Peggy, B <laughs> is Peggy Bundy. What is that? Oh, Married with Children. You don't remember the show? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was the inspiration. I do. All right. So intro thing here. What are we talking about? The myth of the strong, independent women. Independent women. Are we just going to do that random ranting thing about how women ain't shit? Probably not. We're actually no. going to have a much better term on this one. And Rolo, you kind of got us started. Yeah, I did. I'm going to add your stream. I'll add your screen to it. Is it ready? Yeah. Well, the one that you the the, the lead off one is ready, so you can just go and throw that one in there. I'll gotcha. add the other ones up as we go here. Um, this was a uh, hold on a second. Let me pop myself up. Okay. Um, so this was a gosh, was this Instagram or was it? Oh, this is Twitter, I think. Um, so I had this guy who's a, a follower of mine. Uh, I, I don't know if this was on uh, my Patreon, but I, it showed up in my email and it was this exchange. And I ended up uh, handing off the entire exchange to Ryan. So he's seen all of this already before. But this was from a guy named uh, Matthew James Sanchez. Uh, and, th and thank you, Matthew, for today's uh, topic. <laughs> mm. uh, I, this is actually something I've, I've I've talked about in the past, but I haven't really considered it until recently. And I think the reason I haven't is because I'm seeing more of the, this is the, this, this was like the trigger post. And then the rest of the uh, responses to this is really the, sort of the meat of today's show or today's topic. But uh, this was a, uh, a post that he put up and I don't know if he paraphrased me on this or whatever, but uh, this is something that I've actually posted or I've written in one of my books, but it's, it's kind of a paraphrase of what, of something I've written in the past, but it says uh, feminism has convinced women that having a degree, drive a competitive spirit, uh, being assertive and goal driven, thinking rationally and logically and being an independent woman are cues that attract men to are our cues that attract men to women. However, these are cues that attract women to men. These are masculine characteristics. Enjoy your degree. Just understand these things will not attract dominant, confident men. However, uh, they will attract beta men playing the female gender role by the dozens. Most men couldn't care less if you're a lawyer or a barista. What we care about is if you're beautiful, femi or beautifully feminine and will compliment us uh, as we are complimentary to you. Feminism has lied to you. Okay, so this is actually pretty close to um, something I wrote. Uh, I I've actually a couple of things that I've wrote. The, the first thing I wrote uh, was back in, uh, I think I was writing uh, Schedules of Mating was the first essay that I wrote about this. I, this was something from uh, So Suave that I wrote way back in like 2004, I think. And Schedules of Mating was, uh, or, or was it, no, it was a Timeline of the Professional Woman. That's what it was called. And I still have that post on my, on my site right now. But the Timeline of the Professional Woman was... Uh, this is the same narrative we've been listening to for a very long time, like this strong, independent woman narrative. And I broke that down as far back as 2004 and actually probably even, maybe even before that. But um, the story, the context changes, but the, the story and the motivation behind it doesn't change. So really after the sexual revolution, uh, that's when we started um, inserting women into the workforce. Uh, we started feeding them on the idea of... Um, of what independence meant. And as sort of a, a build up to this show today, I was trying to, to tease this out a little bit, but you know, women don't want to participate in, in, in polls or they don't want to have, I, I'm, I'm guilty sometimes of appealing to women's reason or their, you know, 
trying to get them to sort of think about things. And it always comes back to bite me in the ass and it will bite you in the ass too whenever you appeal to women's reason. Uh, but one of the things I did was I said, tell me what you think a strong, independent woman is. If you want to tell me what a strong woman is, fine. If you want to tell me what an independent woman is, fine. If you want to tell me what both of those are, fine. I didn't get too many responses for that, but there's a lot of responses to this particular post that Matt uh, Sanchez threw out here. Um, and they're the ones that you would probably expect. They're the, the you're a misogynist. Uh, I'm an, I, I make my own damn money. I make my own damn decisions. And when I first wrote about this in the timeline of the professional woman essay, uh, I made exactly this, uh, this point here, which is uh, because we have masculinized women, women believe that their attraction or men's attraction ought to be based upon the things that make men attractive. So if we have, if we've masculinized women, it stands to reason that women eventually will presume that the things that make a man uh, attractive to them, like, you know, confidence, independence, uh, you know, have being his own man kind of thing, being stoic, being, you know, uh, pretty much all the motivational shit that you see like today uh, in these, um, uh, I, I've got a few of these here. But Basically I'm, putting tits on a dude. Exactly. Putting tits on a dude. And um, and then what's, what's happened is we've come like, three generations maybe four generations into it right now and we uh, and and so now we're, we're we're listening to the fourth generation of women who have been fed this strong independent woman narrative and usually when i when i uh write that down strong independent woman i put a little uh registered trademark behind it because that it, it because it's a brand right now the, the strong independent ideal uh, when we were talking about, oh, we need more strong women in Hollywood. Well, that's a cliche now. We've had it for so long that you can't write a woman who's not a strong independent woman. And so I kept asking this, and, and this is really what uh, the rest of Matt's thread is, was all about because women were responding to this. is They were essentially trying to give a reasonable, rational, rational uh, response to this. Now, most of them were like, who hurt you? You're a misogynist. That, that's to be expected. But the women in this were trying to say, I'm independent. And it's like, okay, what does that mean? Independent of what? Strength. I'm strong. I'm a strong woman. Okay, what does that mean? Because Open a jar of pickles like a motherfucker. <laughs> well, but, yeah, exactly. Well, the thing is, is like, the, there's a joke, right? You know, you're a strong, independent woman who needs to be reminded of it all the time. Right. And so oh. we've got all these like motivational, you know, memes and everything else to 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 re like uh, what Beyonce. There's a million Beyonce and a million Marilyn Monroe quotes. Like, uh, you know, if you can't handle me at my worst, then you don't deserve me at my best. Kind of. Yeah, thing. her best is that she burns tea water, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Well, here's my question, then. So you're right. Like, let's face it. We all of us on this panel, we know this is bull. We know it's complete nonsense. Most of the girls we know also know it's nonsense. My question for Carl and Troy, do you, have you ever met anybody who truly believes this or is it somebody who wants to believe it and constantly has to like, like almost like an affirmation. I want it to be true. I desperately need it to be true. Okay. I'm going to jump in here and uh, sorry, Troy, but like, yeah, I've met someone, my ex-wife, she firmly <laughs> believed in this shit and the main issue with it is just that in order to reinforce it, you have to look past reality, right? Because like most girls, if you want to be harsh, uh, they kind of want to be taken care of, but they want to be taken care of by a guy they respect and a guy they ha think has value. But it sounds very good to be like, oh, yeah, I'm a strong, independent woman. I have my own shit. I can handle my own shit. And to be honest, I actually like that in a woman uh, just as a baseline, like, okay, a woman who has, like, most of the stuff in her life handled to a reasonable degree, like, all girls are gonna have issues with, like, uh, most girls are spending too much money, let's be fucking honest, but, <laughs> and they're, like, a little bit too emotionally involved in a lot of purchases, but that comes with the territory, and I, to make an analogy back to politics, like, the the Democrats used to be known as the mommy party. They were the people who were looking to take care of you. 
And the Republicans used to be called the daddy party. They were the people who were like, no, but we don't have the money to take care of this. We have to keep our house safe. Yeah, you can have pink drapes, but at least put the bars up in front of it. And for me, that issue with, um, oh, Josie in chat. Yeah, I'm drunk as fuck, man. Just deal with it. But uh, for me, <laughs> uh, my ex-wife, the biggest issue with her is you always have to kind of cater to that delusion that they're strong and independent, even if they are broke and relying on you to kind of cover their discrepancies. And I think that becomes like the biggest negative of the whole thing is that in order to enable that delusion you put yourself up for a lot of work and i think what a lot of the guys who are actually accepting of this do is they're like okay you okay you're a corporate lawyer you make a hundred you make 300 grand a year but you have a raging alcohol problem you're fucking two of the partners at your firm and you're neglecting the kids and you're neglecting your relationship but I'm going to pretend like that's not happening in order to further enable your delusion. And it puts you in the same position as someone who's living with an alcoholic in that <laughs> you're constantly making excuses for them. Uh, Troy, what was your take? I, my take is, is slightly different because actually the reality is I meet very few women who actually buy into this stuff wholesale i mean the majority of girls that i meet and that i date and that i have dated in the past tend to be very soft on feminism really and maybe that's kind of what i'm selecting for so you know we can't rule that out but most of the girls that i sort of come into contact with tend to be very sort of like yes on the one hand of course you know they're they're, they're, they're up for female equality and everything else why not um but they don't really sort of like buy into the narrative quite to the extent that we see on the internet, which is why I sometimes feel like, um, you know, like the, the make women great again, guys, are sort of tilting at windmills a little bit, because I think actually there's a huge sea of women who are kind of like, yeah, broadly on board with, you know, a softer sort of feminism, or, or maybe even like you might call it, a, I mean, what do they call it now? Third stage feminism, you know, like more like a second stage feminism of like equality and the basic kind of stuff. Um, but they don't, totally buy into the whole sort of power woman thing you know or they pay lip service to it but then they sort of admit yeah but i i kind of want to get married and settle down and you know i, I maybe i want to stop work then and everything so um i don't know man I, I just think that there's a large swathe of women who sort of like uh, are as bemused by the more nutty peripheries of feminism as perhaps we are have well you almost make it sound like rollo's thing where girls want a guy who just gets it so they'll mm. say stuff expecting you to kind of see through the bs mm. almost like they'll prattle on about the strong independent women because any man who's worth his salt knows that's bs and kind of just blows right through it anyway right. um rollo back on to you I, i'm gonna add this extra screen here so we'll see some yeah, follow through I, I, on I, it a few of these i thought this was one of the better ones so i thought thought i'd throw that up there now these are some of the responses now once this guy and i don't know who follows matt matt i'm i uh, just recently became aware of this guy maybe this is facebook I think this is Facebook because there's a lot of yeah, this a lot is, of chicks emoting. Yeah, <laughs> well, there is, and then there's a lot more characters than you would get away with on on Twitter here. So this is actually Facebook. So there, there you go. Um, so you look at a few of these things like here, like Beth Jones says, uh, yeah, this is actually complete bogus. I'm not even a feminist. Blah blah blah. Okay, we heard that uh, again. Maybe maybe the uh, the whole thing with uh, Tommy Laren, uh, her claiming that she wasn't a feminist yet men are trash, and pretty much uh, goes on for about a 20 minute screed on. On pretty much every feminist talking point that you can think of. And this gets back to what, what Troy was saying here a minute ago is like, I think that I think you're right, Troy, but I think you're right for the wrong reasons. Because mm -hmm. I think that um, women like to identify yourself as a feminist today is a bad thing for most women. Like they don't want to like, I think it was Milo Yiannopoulos was saying that only like 12% of women will like, I like identify as a feminist, a, a feminist, but yet all of them hold feminist ideals as just kind of like self-evident, right? Like so this it's is a branding issue. issue. It's not even an ideological. Well, it, is, it is, but it's, it, you know, the women that, that came prior to the sexual revolution and the women that came after that, cause we're four generations past the sexual revolution right now, maybe technically, I guess even five now we're coming up on five. Um, 
But if you go and you look at the just sort of the gender norms and the attitudes and everything that happened prior to the sexual revolution, that's really the starting point for all of this. And I, I've said this before, that if you are a man or a woman born after, say, like 1965, feminist ideology has had some effect on you. So to and I told Milo this one time, and I don't think he was too happy about it, but I told him, I said, you know what, to, to identify as feminist or not to, or I'm an anti-feminist is pretty much irrelevant. It's kind of meaningless today to say I am or I'm not a feminist because the it, it, you're it, in some way, shape, or form, feminism is in is in your it's baked into your your psyche right now. Even even Trump was talking about, oh, we're going to make a, a a statue to the achievements of women and and I'm you know whatever. But the fact that that would even be a priority or something that comes out of his mouth leads me to believe that somewhere along the line, I mean, this is a guy who has you know been around since the sexual revolution. Um, Somewhere along the line, he's picked up uh, through through uh, acculturation or through popular media or through education or whatever. You know, we say, well, he's he's the the grab him by the pussy president, right? But yet, yeah. the same guy who prioritizes when it's you know when it works for him, uh, when it's convenient to prioritize women's rights and all this other stuff that you know that plays well to his constituency. But then you get stuff like this, like where you've got these girls who are, you know, there's a lot of women who responded to this. So you got Beth Jones, and this is just the typical blow off, right? I'm not even a feminist. Well, you are Beth. You're a feminist. I was okay? going to say that's not a good thing to say. You're yeah, you're oh, you're you're definitely a feminist. But see, women like like Tommy Lahren like uh, was a really good illustration of this. She thinks that feminists look like Lena Dunham. Mm. Feminists have purple hair, and you know they they grow their armpit hair or whatever, and they're running around with with placards and you know be good you know, with pink pussy hats and stuff. Like that's a feminist to them, and so for them it's almost like a a political or an ideological. Um, uh, designation, like it's a, a what is it, identity politics? Oh, there you go. You got this up. So, and then you got Ashley Earls who comes below that. She says, "Laughing my ass off. I'm a firefighter, and I have my own manly man." Sounds like someone wasn't comfortable with their masculinity when they wrote this. This is a really good example of shaming for masculinity. So what this means is you don't have the man card. I do. I know what a real man is, and you're not it. So with you that. Goofy bitch, you. Yeah, I said the dead sushi argument. Like, I, I actually wanted to look at them because I actually found the Diana Morton comment to be the most interesting. Mm -hmm. Because she says, unfortunately, the men in my life are the reason why I've had to learn to rely on nobody except myself. Right. And mm -hmm. I think this is actually a valid point mm -hmm. in that I think a lot of men aren't actually living up to what women are expecting them to do. Therefore, women feel like they have to handle that part mm -hmm. because their men aren't stepping up. And I can kind of get where they're coming from because it, at least in my head, like women want to feel they want safety more than anything. Women are like the less risk averse gender. You can see that in any study. Mm -hmm. So they would prefer for their man to wake up when they hear a noise and bring the baseball bat or the gun downstairs to see if there's someone down there. But if the man isn't going to step up, if he's going to be there in his like one CP pajamas, sipping his tea, <laughs> then the woman's going to be like, if I'm more of a badass than my man is, I'm going to go do that. And you can kind of see like that aspect play out in relationships too, because like every guy I know at least is kind of apprehensive about going to the doctor. Like I can still walk, I can stay on my feet. Okay, it's good enough. I'm not dead. If I'm not dead, I'm healthy. Basically, that's a ma male view of health. Like every guy has their like no guy goes to get like a prostate exam. Because they decide that would be a smart thing to do for my health. They do it because like their wife nags them like, hey, you really need to go see your doctor. And I think that plays through in this. And I think that's why these things are attraction cues in men. Because you want a competent man. You want a man who accomplishes things. You want a man who is able to solve problems. In the absence of such, you try to do it yourself. But those things aren't attraction cues for men. Because a real masculine man, and I hate to use that term because it's just so exclusive in a sense. It's like the no true Scotsman fallacy for gay shit on Twitter. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the manhood but, card, right? It's the yeah. 
You don't know what a man is. I do. A real man does X. I have the manhood medal. Here it is. If you do what I tell you to do, you get the manhood medal. That's why I hate it. But like, if you look at like, go back or go to like, I think this is why people, men should travel more. Like go to a country that has a really conservative culture. You can go to Eastern Europe. You can go to Asia. You can go to Latin America and see how these countries, men in these countries behave and what their women expect them to do. Mm. And that's essentially a more pure form of what we're expected to do. It's only that the culture here is more, let's say, refined in a sense that it's a knowledge economy, blah, 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 whatever the idiots are telling you. But <clears throat> that's what it boils down to is look at what men are expected to do by default. Look at what women are expected to do by default. And you just adapt that to your own culture. It's the same reason why I've said to guys who are looking to get into game and understand girls, don't be a creep, but go and observe how clicks of girls work when they're in school. Go look at high school girls. Because, <laughs> no, but uh, I know it sounds skeevy and it sounds sketchy. It's you know, the thing I love that. about high school girls is that they keep, I keep getting older and they keep staying the same age, right? <laughs> but now the whole, the whole reason is like when most of the guys who are watching this get into the sexual marketplace, they're 10, 15 years behind the girls they're going up yeah. to. That's and true. because most girls will be getting into this at 13, most guys who are naturals get into it at 13, 14. Mm-hmm. Most, most guys who are like quote unquote normal get into it in high school, like 15, 16, 17, they start interacting with girls. Most guys in this space who actually find the shit we're doing, they're 25 and they're on like a pre high school level of this, in my opinion. Yeah, and well, and like you have to like look at how people handle things as they refine their methods. Like we, when I was in school, just to do a story, we used to fight like fist fight in recess if we disagreed with someone. Mm-hmm. In yeah. high school, it started to be an issue that they would kind of the teachers and it would have consequences if I punched someone in the face during math class. So we started to move into new methods of fucking each other up that didn't involve, you know, punching. And it's the same thing with game. You can get away with, like, very, very unrefined game if you're hitting on a 13-year-old girl and you're a 14-year-old boy. Thank you for that preface. Yeah, (laughs) thanks for the clarification. But (laughs) if you have the game of a 14-year-old boy and you're hitting on a 24-year-old woman... That's not going to work. And I think that's what we have to get back to here is just the refinement of things. I have a bit of a tirade, sorry. No, it's a good one. Here, Troy, I want to throw this at you then. So you heard yes. Carl's thing about not step up, but it's it's short enough. We kind of cut it down. Another discussion we had back when it was like chicks were loving to talk about the red pill and then inject their crap in it. That trust thing came up too, where mm. girls were describing why they decided to get their STEM degree, become a lawyer or a doctor or whatever the hell they were going to do. And the one girl would mention a lot of girls actually had this same story, but this one that stuck out to me is like, well, I saw the way my dad treated my mom and I promised myself I would never be in that position. And then eventually he kind of wedged it out of her. How bad was his dad to his mom? Dad was great. Treated her like the best treated the, treated the daughter slightly better, but he had her on an allowance and that was so demeaning. (laughs) But yeah, she was just like a stay at home mom took care of the kids. She was nice. She was happy. Dad was happy. But she was on an allowance, and I was—I would never want to demean myself that much. So my thought on it is, yeah, Carl's right in like the classical model of how these relationships go. It's the most Lindy method. It's been around the longest. It does the longest. But a lot of girls seem to have this self-sabotaging model that they treat that happiness as an indignity. I'm just curious about your thoughts on it. Which way you want to go on this? Is it—is it that men aren't stepping up, or is it that women? set themselves up for failure by allowing them not to have a man step up. You know what I mean? I think it's a bit of both, to be honest. I think that uh, guys are, there's an element of guys not stepping up. I think that, you know, the element, the idea of uh, masculinity being under threat in the West has been well documented in this space. And I think there's some truth in that. Um, But I also think that uh, it's down to the expectations that women have, created for themselves or have been created by the culture and there's just a real problem isn't there there's a real and you see this in your personal relationships I mean like with my 
girls that I've dated, you know, you see this real schism between, on the one hand, they love the feminist narrative and they and they agree with it and they want to buy into it, but they're conflicted because they also actually want something that in the end is, is, is much more traditional than that, you know? Um, so I think it's a real problem. I think what Carl said about going to places like Eastern Europe is really true, though, because when you, what we have to remember and what I always think whenever I hear these discussions is all of this stuff is, is really pertinent, but we are talking about the United States of America and the UK and the Anglo and Canada and the Anglo sphere in, in general and maybe Western Europe. But go out of those areas and things look very, very different. And when you go to, say, Russia, and then you come back over to London, you can see how different those cultures really are. You know, if you go, you go to see a, a, a country that is much more traditional, things are very, very different there. Are they happier? Well, that's a bit of a moot point, but in some ways they probably are because they, you know, you know what really causes unhappiness and disquiet in people? It's having too many options. It's having too many possibilities. Mm. And when you go to a country where, certain things are still expected you know there there is tradition and people are expected to behave a certain way i mean they may they may not like they may not love it but it sort of simplifies things in a way whereas you know here we're in this world where women are you know are told that they can be anything that they want to be um and that they embrace that which is which is fine but they also you know often want this what ultimately boils down to a much more traditional thing in the end, um, there's just a massive conflict and it's not, it's not easy um, for them at all. And in some ways, you know, these more traditional societies, things are actually simpler. Yeah. Something to be super simpler. Quick break off. Ethan Aldig. Thank you, Ethan, for the super sticker. I don't know. Did you type that or is that actually a thing now? It's a sticker. Oh, fair enough. And Jerry Oaksmith, $25 super chat. Where are the super chats? Show some love brothers. It's all good. I've found one. Oh, I found two. And then yeah. like Zelda 64. <laughs> by I the way, look all... at Legend of Zelda not laugh Thank now. Uh, by Thank the way, guys, all your super chat goes towards the Ryan and Troy shirt fund. So if you want them to have better <laughs> shirts for the next shows, the mo this is where your money is going to. Come on, help out. <laughs> that one of those. Uh... Uh, you love the myth of narrative of videos because they're ideas begging to be written in novels. Well, aren't they in your fourth novel? <laughs> Rolo. Oh, my fourth novel. My novel. eventually find really its way out. Novel, but yeah. Um, no, I, I, I think I, I, I hear what you're saying. I know that there's a cultural uh, difference here. Uh, and there are still um, cultures, societies, ethnicities, whatever, that have a much more, I think there's more of a, uh, let's just say a an ex expectation of of almost patriarchy from from men, but yet there is still this desire. I think to like it's it. Women want the best of both worlds, right? They want the old order and they want the new order. So they want that old order. I want a guy who steps up. I want a guy who's going to you know pick up the baseball bat and go downstairs if there's a bump in the night kind of thing. I want that guy, but also I want him to. I I want him to know that I don't need him. I just want him, right? And it's it, what what I think I've I was doing a lot of homework for this particular episode, and what I see that in these sort of motivational kind of memes is always I'm independent I don't need no man and I've said this before is that when women talk about strong independent women what they're saying is they're independent of men it's not like oh I I can take care of myself and I can do my own things no it's you're independent of a need for a man and you will see this constantly repeated over and over in every meme and every it's like battered into women's psyches from the time they're little girls for the last four or five generations like this diana morton girl here she was talking about this uh what is it uh, in my life uh are reasons why i have to had to learn to rely on nobody but myself now remember that self-reliance it sounds and it plays really good for men because that's what we think of that's what we expect of men we expect men to be like these maverick independent guys who you know don't take no lip from nobody and they get they go out and they get the job done kind of guy right um so she's but i think this means something different for women now okay because what she's saying is i've learned to i had to uh, rely on nobody but myself and that meme or that that messaging has has been something that's constant really since the i would say the early 70s and then she says if a man isn't attracted to me being able to hold my own what does that mean what does that mean hold oh, that me container home. word yeah what does that mean it means jack shit is what that means 
Well, I do think, though, that if you look at, like, cultural... I think Space Karen is, like, the best example of what feminism wants women to be. <laughs> yeah, well, and for, for a parent, for those who aren't aware of that means, look at, like, the role played by... Uh, what's her name? The chick with... Laura like, Dern with the purple hair in Star Wars. Yeah, Space no, Karen. Not, no, not her. Like, the... Captain Marvel, the new girl. I just can't... Sorry, I can't oh, yeah, remember yeah. a girl's... Like, Three I can't Lars. remember... A, like. I have to have either tits or an ass to remember a girl's name, and the girl has neither. <laughs> but uh, like, she's like the perfect example. She like she shows up, she basically beats everyone's ass, and she doesn't rely on anyone but herself. And the thing we have to remember about the human condition that is that we we're all reliant on other people for right. something. But you have to be able to choose your own reliances. Like, I can perfectly understand that, let's say, a girl grows up with an alcoholic father who doesn't have any money, that she has an increased need for security and wants to make sure that she has enough income to comfortably live. I can understand that. But the complete independence is essentially saying that I want to be in a relationship with a person who I don't actually need to be there. I gain no value from this person being there. I just want them there for comfort. It's kind of like a cat in a sense. It's like the strong independent stereotype is like they want a relationship that's like the relationship they have with their cat. Because they get they get no tangible value from the cat being there. The cat isn't going to defend them. If some if they hear a bump in the night, the cat isn't bringing an income, but the cat is there, and when she wants to cuddle, it will cuddle with her, provided that she doesn't pay any attention to it. And well, I, I just think the whole idea of this independent shit is wrong because we're all bound to each other in some right. kind of sense. Right. And like I had to talk with Ryan earlier, like the kind of friends you want in your life are the guys who will tell you the truth that you need to hear, even if it will lose you the friendship. And the kind of guy that women should go for is the kind of guy who will actually hold them accountable and be honest with them, regardless of how crazy they are. I think that's kind of the important thing in it. Like we need to balance each other out. Like women spend too much money and are too focused on comfort Guys are, in some senses, too focused on utility. I love that sad MGTOW apartments thing, for instance, because it perfectly illustrates <laughs> men kind of in a vacuum. But then if you look at how women's apartments are when they're single, that perfectly illustrates women in a vacuum because you have like 3,000 pillows on that bed that you have to actually move the fuck off the bed before it's actually possible to sleep in it. The pile of clean laundry behind the selfies. Yeah, so for me, it's more of a balancing act. And to say that you're a strong, independent woman who don't need no man is just saying that you are not capable of having any form of interdependence in your life. And I personally, I think that's a sign of probably a fear of being abandoned more than anything else. Well, I was what I was going to say is like when I was looking at Diana, Diana Morton's comment, and there's some other really choice ones here too, but hers kind of, and this is Salma Hayek right here, right? What she's saying this is, uh, I if a man isn't attracted to me uh, for being able to hold my own, he's not my type anyways, right? Oh, Marilyn so, Monroe. Which, yeah, exactly. And then she says, I'll be with a man because I want to, not because I ever need to. And that's where we kind of have to draw the line because I think what happens here is women believe they, they don't think they need a man, but they just want a man. And that is something I think has been sold to women for a very long time now. And I, and I agree with you, with, with you, Carl, because, but if, probably from a different angle, because when, <clears throat> when I look at this, I see, uh, generation after generation of women who have uh, been sold this idea or this archetype of men as being unreliable, undependable, uh, think with their dicks, uh, or are like Dr. Huxtable, uh, Homer Simpson, ridiculous guys. A guy, men to women today, real, really since the early 70s, the, the only choices you get with men, as according to you know, feminism and women, is you get the guy who is ridiculous, who is a caricature. He's a cartoon character. He's like, he's like, don't be dead. You know, he's like, everybody loves Raymond. He's that guy. He's the, he's the dorky dumb dad who needs mom to save him from himself. 
and to and she has this unique feminine way to like make him a better guy but he would be lost without her kind of guy so here you have and that's that is an archetype that is based on incompetence he's a lovable doof we love him to death but he's incompetent and if we weren't around he'd probably trip over a a rake and kill himself or something right like that kind of, oh, you know or else we have the guy who's a borderline abuser and he's the dangerous one and maybe he's sexy but he's the guy that will will like just he's the destroyer of worlds right he's the guy who's going to be abusive he's the guy that might like beat up your mom if she doesn't have the money on time kind of thing he's he's the <laughs> he's guy He's the abusive or, or he's the bad dad. He's the he's the dad who's the alcoholic who who runs off on mom because poor mom and left him with all these kids kind of, you know, that archetype or that 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 cliched story right now. So when you have generation after generation of women who only see men as those archetypes, yeah, they're going to be looking for ways to create their own sense of security because they can't they, they've been told by a feminist, by a gynocentric social order, that men are unreliable, men are bastards, men are evil, and if you if you trust them, you're going to be screwed. So you got to go do it all yourself, girl. And and here we are in 2020, and I'm reading exactly the same language, exactly the same rationales, exactly the same archetypes that were fed to women as far back as like the late 60s with Gloria Steinem and and the early, you know, I guess third wave feminists, right, who are saying exactly the same thing. And now we here we are five, well, four or five generations later and women are saying, I, I need a guy. And if I if the guy can't accept me being able to provide my own security, then he's not the man for me. But the fact is, is she still needs a man. She doesn't want a man. She needs a man. And in every, in, like, that's the, the beauty of social media and the beauty of, of an interconnected world online is that we can see this in black and white and we can see story after story, incident after incident, where we see that this narrative is just utter horseshit. But women. To be honest, though, like, I, I like a woman who can make her own money. It just means she's going to be spending hers before she spends mine. Well, yeah, yeah but that's okay. a different thing, though. That's <laughs> taken in a positive direction. Rolo's talking about once you dial a tism up to 12, which actually segues into Joe's question here. Will the Will Western culture ever realize it's a coping strategy for women so they can be marketed to with more products geared towards the message? First off, well, I, think it's, I think it's. Um, yeah, sorry, Troy, it's all yours, man. I was just going to say, I think it's um, they're being marketed to so that ultimately they, they buy more stuff. You know, like I don't always buy in too much to sort of, you know, the more conspiratorial sort of ideas of things. But I think that, yes, if you are, you know, the strong independent woman meme uh, ultimately means that those women are going to be consumers for more, for more things. Right. And uh, the more sort of like polarized. We are, <laughs> well, exactly. Yeah. Strong independent stuff that they need to be strong and independent. So I, I think that a lot of this is to be honest down to, uh, to marketing and to the to the needs of advertisers, really. Um, I was going to uh, just chime in on what Rollo was saying, though, about women um, having been fed um, this, you know, th these ideas for such a long time. And I think I think what what we're seeing is that we, like like Rollo said, we, we're now there's a, a now a sort of fourth or fifth generation of women who are sort of saying the same stuff. And I'm not sure that if there's going to be any end to it. I mean, like my girl the other day was saying. And she's like in a sort of, well, she's kind of like late twenties now, but she's in her twenties. And she said the other day, um, kind of half jokingly, but but sort of seriously, you know, uh, I think um, I think uh, it's time we women got revenge now. You guys have had it good for so for so long. I think it's time that we got our <laughs> we got ours now. And I said, well, listen, I haven't I haven't had the full benefit of the the patriarchy. Like, well, why should I suffer? And she's like, no, no, it's just it's our turn now. So you've got that kind of thing going on. Um, you know, and, and when's this going to end? Because then the next generation is going to be saying that as well. And the next generation, you know, and, and this this sort of like punitive uh, attitude towards men is just going to continue, you know. Yeah, and um, we can't give them all four acres and a mule. We don't have enough mules. Well, well I, think, I think as well, the whole thing about the doofus, you know, man being, the men, man being sort of framed as the doofus, as the, as the Peter Griffin character, you know, I think that's very prevalent as well. I had this girlfriend a while back and she used to, I remember like walking down the street and she used to like grab me and try to sort of like, if there was a bit of dog poop on the floor, she'd like grab me and sort of like steer me out the way of the dog poop. And I'm like, listen, I actually said to her, 
at one point. Listen, I'm, I'm 40 years old, right? I have managed to dodge dog excrement for all of my life. I don't need your help to do that. But there was a, this real sense that she was, you know, she was treating me like a little kid. It was a bit like, you can't look after yourself. You can't, you know, I, I have to be here to look after you. Um, and then when I broke out of that relationship, then suddenly she demonized me and she was like, oh, you're, you're toxic. You know, you're one of these toxic guys, you know? And it was a bit like, well, well not really. I just don't want to be treated like a kid because I'm not. Yeah, that everybody is one of her children thing. I guess quickly, I got to catch up on these uh, things and I can see Rolo, you're ready to go on this one. Yeah. DJ Hammer, $10. Thank you for the super chat. That stepping up concept largely depends on the authority responsibility balance. If her belief system is independent woman, it'll just be a relationship of constant power struggle. Dude, that would be a topic in and of itself. And I'm pretty sure we've had one. Yeah, but if we're honest though, like all strong independent women become oddly dependent once they get a good dicking. Also mm -hmm. true, the Lacey Green effect. <laughs> well, yeah, oh. well, it, it's essentially one of the funnier things that I've actually noticed. Like, because I have a lot, I don't have a huge social circle, but it's large enough to have a decent sample size for a study. Intentional. But uh, what I've noticed is like the most hardcore, bitchy, annoying, strong, independent women become oddly docile. Once their deads and sushi are supplanted by a good dicking once in a while. Once <laughs> no, but like once a girl is actually sexually satisfied by a man, she actually dials down all those things in the effort to keep the good dick around. It's like some chick tweeted it the other day and I caught it. It's like, why is it that all the guys who give good dick are bastards? Dig a chat. Yeah. <laughs> And Oliver in this one too. Five dollars is Wonder Woman, not the original cliched strong independent women. Uh, who here is the nerd that can bring history further back? Who's older than Wonder Woman? She was 1930s, wasn't she? I want to say Jonah Ark might have been before that, but then again, oh, Cleopatra was before that. Yeah, there's always something. There's Marilyn Monroe was a was a strong woman that the superhero Wonder Woman. You know, what's interesting is Wonder Woman was created in the sort of in the wake of this this feminine like. If, I forget when I think Wonder Woman was created in the 60s, wasn't she? Like in the, the mid to early 60s as sort of like a a balance for Superman or something like that. Because if you go and you look at the early Wonder Woman's that people send me these freaking comic Oh yeah, she was like a, a like, porno yeah, thing, wasn't well, it? That was Let's be thing. fair though. Like if, if right. you're a really a strong independent woman, how are you getting burned at the stake by men? Like if you're really strong <laughs> and independent, how could you not get yourself out off that stake yeah. before the kindling caught on fire? Fun fact, by the way, uh not to get us demonetized, but the word faggot originally means a bundle of sticks that you use to set the fire when you burned witches. Yeah, yeah. Surprised people don't know that. Isn't that also why the British call cigarettes that? Because it's like a burning stick. Uh, possibly, yeah. They yes, they they, they use the, the slightly abbreviated uh, word fag uh, for cigarettes. Yeah, and then Ian, um, thank you for the five dollars super chat. Read my book, Empathalia. I think you'll like it. Uh, you never gave me a link, so. Mm. Do trolls and then finally, okay, we're caught up. Now we get to your thing after this one, Rolo. Oh no, wait, there's this in Carl. Okay. Vic Nova, ten dollars super chat. Funny, they're all independent in early twenties. Ride the carousel, but once the first wrinkle and a little tit sag comes in, it becomes I've matured. The past is the past. I respect men now. Let's pretend I always had. Yeah, the old sun hat brigade. Yep. <laughs> Again, that's a whole other topic. We do need to make that a better meme, though. We do need to like start putting out like red square marches with like chips and sun hats, <laughs> holding Bibles and home cooked casserole. <laughs> Maybe I'll like, grab I... that old woman of Woolen. Why do so many of the men up on Twitter? Well, the thing is, like, on Twitter, like banging on about how virtuous they are. Well, the thing though, the main thing that bothers me with the sun hat brigade, you know what that is. All their food looks utterly horrible. Like, if you're going to pretend to be like a chick who can cook, at least make your food look mildly presentable. It's like Gordon Ramsay is about to show up in your kitchen and be like, hey, what is this? An idiot sandwich. <laughs> well, that's the problem. It's the hamburger helper. You can't make it look like the box. <laughs> and I guess we'll end off. So on this one, after that, we'll get back to the topic. Carl Hoppeff, thanks for the $5 super chat. These two guys, now I got to iron my Hawaiian shirt for the party I got to go to. Damn you. Dude, Hawaiian shirts are making a comeback because bowling shirts owned the 90s. And I think that was a horrible look. 
<laughs> yeah, bowling shirts. I'm not feeling those, to be honest. I wouldn't go down. I want to wear a Bali Bahama. Does that count? Oh, uh, dude. <laughs> Uh, I want to wear a muumu. I don't want to look like ridiculous. <laughs> this is I, I I threw this one up there because when I was looking for all I did was type in strong independent woman in Google image search. And of course there's a billion memes and this was the single most common one. So beneath every strong and independent woman lies a broken little girl who had to learn how to get back up on her get back up and never depend on anyone. In other words, I, daddy didn't buy her the pony when she was nine. Well, that, and that's the thing. It, that's true. But here's the other thing is never depend on anyone. Never depend. Let that sink in for a little bit because that's what really this independent thing comes from. What I, and I, I've written about this is in book four. It's in, in actually in book three too, is when it comes to the independent woman meme, again, it's independence from men, but it, it, but it's not, that's the ideal anyways. It's not the real truth. It's not the reality. Women are very dependent on men to do pretty much anything right now uh, for their own survival. They can't even use social media without men. But we want to say that, well, they're emancipated from men. And what happens is when feminism and gynocentrism <laughs> generation after generation of women, this idea, for, it, first of all, it, it provides them with what I've called a, a false sense of security, both physically and mentally, because they think that they are not dependent on anyone, exactly as this meme uh, relates here. And what that does is it, it, it presents women with the idea that they are self-fulfilled, self-satisfying, uh, without a need outside of themselves for anything. And if they do, they are not strong and independent. They are weak and dependent. You see how that's a binary message right there? So if you do anything where if you in any way say, I really wish I had a man or I need, where are, where are all the good men at? When we see, like you were saying before, when women get to a certain age, that's when they start shaming men for not being there when they thought that they would be there which is right when they get off the cock carousel in the epiphany phase. So they get very upset and very pissed off if their beta in waiting isn't there stupid and ready to go for, you know, to build a family while she was busy being independent and strong throughout her, you know, 20s up until her 30s. And so you've got this generation of generation of women who believe that they are these autonomous self-fulfilling things. And that when they get to a point where they actually need a man or they, ha they have a, a very strong want, let's just say, you know, which is really a need for that guy, they get upset. So they either redirect that at themselves or they redirect it at men. And, and, and right on cue, the feminine imperative is right there with social conventions that say men are infantile. Men have fragile egos. Men are threatened of strong, independent women. Uh, men only want to get with young chippies back, you know, the, the men that you want to get with, they're only interested in 22 year olds because now they have sexual selectivity and they can actually pursue that. But it leads to a very uh, generation after generation of frustrated women who get to the point where they're like, I can't find a guy and either they go lesbian <laughs> or they are single and childless when they get into, you know, into their forties. Uh, it's what the Morgan Stanley and uh, I think Forbes magazine call the the rise of the she economy. They're already planning for 2030, where something like 52% of women who are of a marriageable age will still be single and childless by the time they hit about like 38 to 40 years old. 40% more disposable income. They're already planning the business strategies for those women because well, that's what they see happening. I do kind of want to comment because Ryan put me on something like three podcasts ago where he was talking about emotional versus logistical problems in a relationship. Mm. And I kind of want to get into this because like with <clears throat> trauma, especially because most of the women who are like, I learned not to depend on a man because I suffered some kind of failure on the part of a man early in my life. So I'm never going to rely on that again. Most of that trauma is not logistical. It's emotional. Like a lot of the like, uh, girls with daddy issues, they didn't have abusive dads per se. They had dads who provided for them, had a house, had food, etc. They were just not emotionally there. And mm. the void they're trying to fill with logical things, money, independence, etc., resources, are at the core an emotional problem. There's a hole in her that cannot be filled by good deck, to put it like that. And I think that emotional gap is kind of what we need to address in this case and kind of 
figure out in quotation marks because it's once you find the solution to that problem uh then we can move forward because i've never met a girl who was like i'm going to be a strong independent woman who had a good relationship with her dad and going by my ex-wife for instance like me having a broken leg was less of a problem than her dad saying mean words to her or they were at least equivalencies and i think you have to kind of look at this from that perspective you have an objective perspective on it like okay, your dad wasn't there to catch your first re first band recital. He wasn't there when you were on cheerleading. He wasn't there for your first show at the titty bar. I get it. You <laughs> wish your dad. You wish your dad was around more. We get it, but don't take that out on everyone else by going ham on every other guy out there. Well, that's the other question is that yeah, let's say we find out that's an emotional need to fill. Is it too late? Like we're under <clears throat> no obligation to fix women. If hey, you're at the point where a girl's 32 with a drinking problem, basically put Rolo's kid through college with her drinking habits. At that point, it's like, yeah, you're on your own. Sort it out amongst yourself. Uh -oh. Although, I guess we're going to welcome John here. What's going on, John? I'll read these out while you're doing your champ. The champ is here! The champ is here! I'll pass this off to Troy and John from Rumblefish's $5 Super Chat. Bottom line, is this all bad behavior from both sexes due to having too much time, overthinking, and not enough struggle doing important things? I figured it'd be a good for you, Troy, to jump on that point you had before where we just have way too many choices, but it's all yours. Take it where you take it. Um, I Broadly speaking, I think, yes. I think uh, a lot of this stuff, you know, we've got the luxury or we've had the luxury for certainly my generation, and I'm, you know, there are people watching this who are of a generations after me um so a lot of us have had the luxury of not having to do to terribly taxing things you know not having to go to war not having suffered from you know terrible well pre-corona you know terrible conditions in our countries of origin and so on and so forth so we do have the luxury of being able to sit around and pontificate about all of this stuff and as has been pointed out earlier in the coronavirus pandemic uh, scenario you know um when we started to go into a a, a a place that at the beginning looked, you know, potentially like, oh, this is quite scary. What's going on here? The whole world's shutting down. We've never seen this before. People, it did seem, started to revert back to slightly more traditional roles. And that's why, you know, we observed that there were girls who appeared to be looking for more provider type guys on their on their on Tinder and on, on the apps and things. Um, so I do think that, yeah, you know, we're in a position where you know, we're, our societies have grown fat and lazy, literally, but also figuratively. You know, we can sit around and pontificate about this stuff. If there was a, suddenly a world war and, you know, um, everyone was worried for their lives and whether there was going to be sort of nuclear destruction across the planet. And let's face it, you know, 2020 has been the gift that keeps giving. So we're probably not far off that point. Um, would would women be talking about strong strongness and independentness? Um Perhaps not, you know. Um, so, so yeah, I do think this is uh, a, a symptom of a, of, of a culture that, you know, we've got a lot of time to just sit on our asses and, and pontificate about this stuff. And again, you know, you go to places that are more, you know, economically straightened and have like more stuff to worry about, basically. And all of this, all of these issues are, are, are much less prevalent. Oh, speaking of third world countries, though. here's one for you, Johnny. Yeah, but Vic one Nova. sec, Ryan. Let's oh, be honest, it. though, Troy. Like, I think the best thing that I think Corona is a good thing because at least like every basic Instagram hoe I know learned how to make great sourdough bread during this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, homemade sourdough is awesome. Mm. All right, Johnny, five dollars super chat from Vic Nova. Huge fan of yours, guys. You got to come to Toronto and do a convention or something here. We'll buy a plane ticket from Japan with Bitcoin. Can you do that? <laughs> Um, what the smuggling just, back into Japan. Yeah, that's the thing. We got to get some Chinese smugglers to get me in a boat, or some Korean smugglers <laughs> to get me in there, and, and I'm I'm down. I'm, getting I'm, out is no problem. Getting back in is the big problem. <laughs> that's the problem there. That's the problem. But we're gonna have a good event uh, with the Rule Zero Live virtual conference. I yeah. mean, I've I have over a year of experience doing these conferences with over 500 guys attending. So we're gonna be having a wonderful time. Sounds good. All right, following up, what do we got here? Ola Mikkelsen or 100 Knox. Does a woman's emotional development park at the mm. age of her trauma and pin in that? Shadi Ramadan, $5. Thank you for the awesome content, guys. And by the way, Carl, 
Are you secretly Frostradamus in disguise? I knew you played WoW the moment I heard your voice. That's funny. <laughs> hey, Carl, can we have some part private information about you? That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not giving that up, but I do actually play a Frost Mage, but not Frostradamus. <laughs> two years of everybody trying to start out because all it took was a super chat and ask hey is that you yeah of course <laughs> Brian, all right so here's one rollo what do you think with this i'm gonna add your screen yeah, cap to it kind of like there. okay so uh yeah okay well so does a woman's emotional development pop uh, I guess he wants to say peak at the age of her trauma. So this yep. is this is Gal Gadot. You guys, I looked this up because you guys are talking about Wonder Woman here. <laughs> this is the woman that plays Wonder Woman. She says, I wanted to show that men or that women are empowered and strong and don't have to be saved by some ma some male hero, but they can take care of themselves using their intelligence and their power. Again, power being a container word there, and. I think this is interesting that this would be like sort of, and this is on AZ quotes, okay? So this isn't just like, you know, something that's getting, a meme that's getting knocked around Facebook, you know, in the power women culture. But um, when I when I see stuff like this, what this says to me is, again, it's that I don't need no man to save me. In fact, I've heard this. Uh, I don't need a man to save me a line in several movies, in Star Trek, in this kind you know, Basic, I, I probably in Ca Captain Marvel too. I can't remember, but but see, the thing is, is this when once we masculinize women, and remember what I was saying before, how women were making qualities that were supposed to be like about uh, independence, that those masculine qualities that are that they find attractive in men, that they believe men should find attractive in them as well. The result of that is the idea that they don't need a man to save them, but when they crash and burn we see that that's the first place they go. Save me, save me, help me, help me. It's your fault. I th Really, again, it goes back to the, uh, the old order uh, need for protection and absolution of responsibility. But then we've also got the new order idea of, I don't need a man to save me. So what is it? We've constantly fed this sort of conflicting message where we want women to be empowered, but we don't want them to suffer the consequences that they would have to do, that any man would have to do for possessing those same aspects and those same characteristics that they seem to think are so valuable. So if you see a man who is, uh, if they, they idolize and admire a man who is a quote unquote alpha male, it's the same thing uh, why I keep saying that uh, uh, the alpha male, the, or excuse me, the alpha female is a myth, is because what they really are is women who are alpha males. They are, they are alpha males with vaginas and boobs. That's what, that's what they end up being because that's a male archetype. That is that those are standards for male attractiveness, not female attractiveness, but they hate that idea because they think that that's the key to attracting a good, high quality, educated, wealthy mate who has, who makes 58% more than what is it? Economically attractive mate has to be somebody that makes more money than them, is more secure than them, is taller than them, is more broad in the shoulders than them, has, you know, basically has all of these things that are like exceeds everything that they are, but they want them to believe that they're their equals, that they don't need them. They just want them. And yeah. we've been feeding this lie to women for so long that they don't see that what they're what they want is sort of their cake and eat it too. Meaning, I want the old order protection with the new order empowerment. So I want to know that when the car crashes and burns and and you know goes careening off the cliff, that a man is going to be there to pull me out at the last minute. Because I don't want to suffer the same consequences. Remember, I keep I, I put this on Twitter all the time. There's a separate standard of justice for women. And this is true in the legal system, and it's true in our society, in, our, in a gynocentric society, is that we expect, we expect women to be um, punished less for the same things, for taking the same risks, for committing the same crimes that a man would. And we expect to be pulled out of those things. I, I well, yeah, didn't you just put out that tweet of the couple that was defrauding a bunch of people? She got two she months. Got he got two, like a year or something. And I can see Troy chomping at the bit this for two. And yeah. then after Troy, I want to yeah. hear what John has to say. He showed up late. So I'm curious, where's your well, women age shit monologue to? <laughs> well, I'm going to segue into John, really, because what Rollo was saying just, just then, I think was bang on. And this is, for me, this is what gets to the hub of this as a you know dating coach and all the rest of it, somebody involved with game. It's, it's sort of like... 
The difficulty is that girls believe these qualities make them attractive. And the harsh reality is that they don't. I mean, the harsh reality is that guys don't really care how much she earns or about her PhD and all of these kinds of things. Now, I, you know, like I'm a libertarian, I've got no issue, you know, with, with, with those accomplishments. I mean, that's absolutely fine, but don't, you, you know, you, you can't be under any illusion as a woman that these things are making you more attractive to the high value guy. Cause they're just not, you know, and it's sort of like, whereas a woman would sleep with a high powered, not high powered, you know, like a high status male celebrity for a guy, the opposite is not true. Like there aren't loads of guys champing at the bit to sleep with somebody like Lena Dunham, for example. Well, why not? You know, like, but they, but they would sleep with the waitress from the local coffee shop who has no status. Um, so, so the attraction triggers for men and women are very different. And I think, you know, there just needs to be a bit of reality in the dialogue, you know, particularly for women, because they, they do believe that these things make a difference. And, Fundamentally, they really don't, you know, and yeah. they just need to realize. And that all came through in John's interview with the beauty pageant girl that he did the other week because yeah. she was pushing that line. Yeah. Dude, you guys are knocking out these super chats before I even put them up. That answers William's question personally or perfectly. All right, Johnny, talk to me more about this beauty queen argument. You <laughs> oh, man. Hey, you know what, John? I would, just before you start, this is exactly why I wanted to talk about this, <laughs> this topic today. Oh. <laughs> no, I am. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, I, I don't. I don't want to say anything about. I mean, you know, the, I did an interview with this chick, and for <clears throat> a lot of people, I guess, were impressed or whatever. But it was just for me. It was just an, another day in the park. Like this is just what I do, and I'm just trying to show guys how to talk to girls. But I'll say this: this whole strong, independent woman thing. Like <sighs> a lot of it is. It's it's smoke, and, it's smoke and mirrors because how can women be superior at the same time, you know, needing a, a literally a handout from men? And um, I don't I really don't care what these women do because uh, Rolo's uh, chart on on the male SMV peaking like at 37, 36. Like I'm looking at what's going on in my life right now, and I'm seeing that uh, kind of you know hit its stride and. Um, when I deal with these chicks, I just don't even like. It's it's funny because when okay when you make it right, you make six figures, you're self employed, you're making you know you're making good money and you have game or whatever, you can see who doesn't get it. You know what it takes to get where you are, and more importantly, you know like who's there and who's not. So you see a lot of these girls. You know they're blah, they're like they're like a, a dirty little chihuahua, like big bark, 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 bark. You know it's like a snarling pig, but like <laughs> when it comes down to the red meat, the content of their character and their accomplishments, it's like, what is it? It's like four abortions, like student loans, and uh, you know, the thousand cock stare. So I mean, I, I personally, like I said, I, the only way to make my Starbucks trip more enjoyable for me is like there's an empowered woman on the other side of the counter miserable just pumping my fucking caramel into my caramel macchiato and uh you know <laughs> and that's not even a euphemism <laughs> yeah you know so i just think it's, it's a lot like when you a lot of guys in my community this one guy he was like you know this girl i thought she had it together i thought this and that then i went to her house it was trashed it was a train wreck it smelled bad like her panties were dirty and it's just like you know this big facade on their instagram i like how they got it together they're a boss babe <clears throat> well, i'll tell you guys this and I'll, I'll pass it on one of my favorite uh pastimes in tokyo these days is i like to go on linkedin and look at girls posting like super professional stuff and then find the exact same girls on seeking arrangement like saying like i need a sugar daddy to do this and that and and it's seriously it's so funny to look at like LinkedIn and then literally watching them like beg for money as they trade their body for it. So it's, it's, and it's I do think it's like this up. Well, to be honest, though, that's like the ultimate game of 2020. Like find girls on LinkedIn yeah. and then see if you could get them to send you nudes. So that, that's like the funnest game ever. dude. Yes. And by the way, John, just so you know, I love the thing you did with saltdaddy.net. Thank you. I'm just saying that the last dude we dealt with who called himself a salt daddy kind of was buying escorts. I'm just saying. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, we super chats are piling up. Let's get these out of the way. Rumble fish. Thanks for the $10 one. Carl hit on this earlier. And of all the bad overthinking behavior, it stops the moment you're met with real carry scary cave behavior. Ah, I see my cavemen, the <laughs> scientific jargons finding its way out. Men work hard. They shut up. Women get alpha. They get an alpha. They shut up. Yeah. When people get what they want, they generally stop complaining. Well, you uh, have to think about the whole thing. Like, I think Corona is the funniest thing ever to validate a lot of what Rolo has been saying. Because if you look what happened with Corona, all the women were suddenly housewives. Mm -hmm. It was done like I, I'm not getting any aspects on my Instagram. It's all like sourdough bread, <laughs> sandwich making, cooking. Mm -hmm. And then again, on the other hand, you have like the girl. You had two kinds of girls during Corona. You had the girls who were like, oh, look at this sourdough bread I just made at home. And then you had the, oh, my God, I haven't been able to get my lashes done for like two and a half days. <laughs> I know it's against quarantine rules, but who is still doing lashes? Hit me up in DMs. Yeah, mm -hmm. those ones were funny. And then uh, Simple Fly, $10. Uh, and good as it gets, Jack Nicholson asked, how do you rate women so well? And he says, I think of a man and take away reason and responsibility. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, a man wrote that line too. It's so. reason and accountability. Yeah, nah, that's the one. And yeah. then Arnold Cash, the $5 one. Here's a question. I think Rolo, you're up for this one. Do you think the movies these girls did, Wonder Woman, Captain Marvel, got them in over their heads, or are they being controlled by somebody else? It's Hollywood. Everybody's controlled by somebody well, else. The hey. most poisonous thing you can give a woman in 2020 to watch her self-destruct is clout. AK, look at, look at Lena Dunham. Look yep. at all these insufferable female celebrities that literally have people that fucking vigilantly hate her. Like, do you think that? Do you think that Brie Larson will play another character as like significant, like to the feminine imperative as Captain Marvel in her entire career? Because she's on the way out. She, to be honest, though, I do think that Brie Lar Captain Marvel is like Brie Larson playing herself. Yeah, exactly. And that's why they chose her, because she is a, this intersectional feminist, right? Well, as soon as that, you know, as soon as the shine is off of that whole thing, do you think that she will ever play a character that is even s remotely similar to that? I don't think so. They might do another movie with her. They might like insert her into some new, some, you know, like a cameo appearance in something, but mm -hmm. she will never be that again. And remember, women in Hollywood, their shelf life is w way shorter than, than men's are a, by a long stretch. So once she's, you know, once she's fattened up and got single mommied, then she's she better she's hope she's better than Meryl Streep at the acting thing. And that's, that's uh, it. I'm not, I'm not saying that. Actress too. Uh, I'm not saying that to be a bastard. I'm just saying that is that is the the reality of Hollywood right now. So what what he's asking though is this: is do they believe it? Do they believe it, or are they media creations? And I think in the case hey, of Brie, Martin, is it a grift, or do they actually they, believe it? Yeah, do they actually believe it, or are they actually just sort of tools of this gynocentric social order? And I would say for the most part, I would I would like to believe that Gal Gadot is sort of just that you know goes along to get along kind of thing and they'll 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 uh, uh what is it attribute uh quote marilyn monroe quotes to to you know gal gadot because it seems like well she's wonder woman so she has to be a, an you ever notice that the the um that the most prominent the most visible feminist icons are superheroes now or are actresses <laughs> they're not like writers like you know uh gloria steinem or whoever else they're it's not them it's who's in the who's in the media who is uh it could be a pixar character and that will be a feminist icon she's a strong independent girl or uh you know ellen ripley from aliens right you know like oh well they're still going back to that that franchise to look for uh a woman who's a strong independent strong powerful lead woman character in those oh, they don't like her, they're kind of forgetting ripley. no but what what they kind of forget about ripley though is ripley was actually a like okay fair enough all disclosure i love the alien franchise mm -hmm. it's one of my favorite movie franchises and ellen ripley is one of my favorite movie characters of all time mm -hmm. But she was actually well written in that role. She had her weaknesses. She has a mental breakdown in Alien 3, I think it is. She has a mental breakdown almost in Alien 2. But my main issue with like the new characters is that if you look at Gal Gadot, you look at Captain Marvel, 
If you look at Ray from the new Star Wars movies, I knew you were gonna they, say that, they're bitch. they're poorly <laughs> no, but they're poorly <laughs> written yeah. one dimensional characters that do not have any depth to them. And I like as a writer, that kind of bugs me because if you look at Luke Skywalker from the original Star Wars, the whole thing that made that movie so epic was Luke's journey from I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing to Return of the Jedi. He went from like a boy to a comp he went from incompetence to competence basically no he couldn't even moisture farm properly what the hell mm -hmm. yeah and i think that that's kind of what i'm missing with that on um, like a like a purely well, like mary sue well, you mary know what it is though yeah mary it's the mary sue bad. but it, it kind of bugs me because like i like well like that's why i love ender's game like i orson scott wells i can disagree with his politics as much as i want to but Ender's Game and the uh, with the Speaker for the Dead books are extremely good in the characterization of Ender from start to finish. And I well, realize it's it's got sort of a digression, but what they're giving people is an unrealistic, poorly written archetype to live up to instead of what we've had throughout history, which are actual good archetypes that actually yeah. give you example right. i can Here's be as anti-christian as i want oh, i think that's oh. perfectly on topic you can oh, do that though Joseph, carl uh... commando schwarzenegger one-dimensional complete power fantasy but he had the charisma and the charm it was fun to make that enjoyable yeah. on and its he face had the, he had the most important part he was a fucking man okay <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing if if uh captain marvel troy you're mean was 10 percent likable oh yeah you're troy, muted, muted troy buddy. here <laughs> Unmute. If she was even 10% likable, I don't think people would have given a shit. It's just the yeah, fact like, that she had to be a cunt about it. Yeah, but like, look at the movie The oh, Babysitter. Yeah. It's one of the funnier, like, it's like a horror comedy thing. And the female role in that is really well written, in my opinion. But, but Carl, I think the thing is here, this is why politics and art don't mix very well. This is why songs, when bands do songs and it's a political song, they tend to be shit, you know? Like, yeah. art needs to be some, about something more. And if you're just engineering a character in order to make a point about, you know, um, the, you know the, the patriarchy or women or whatever, it's never going to be as... It's it's never going to be as good as a character that's just created it. No, it's like that's why I love you too. But I think Bono is an absolute cunt. <laughs> <laughs> well, some U two's all right, but I mean, like, I, I mean, that's, you know, we got people like Billy Bragg and people like that over here, and you know, just just overtly political songs tend to be crap. You know, oh, yeah. Like there needs to be. We are the world was the that. last good one, and that's only because Jackson did them solos in there. All right, let's get. Uh, we got four super chat built up. Let's try and crush them out of here. Did you know, Mad with two bucks? MLD is kids in your future. Street isn't wifey. Does he mean sleeping with or having? Uh, I think he means uh, having kids. I mean, yeah, I definitely want to have kids in the future, but right now I'm, I'm having a good time. Yeah, fair enough. So, Anmar, my argument with strong independent women on the wall did not yield any results, but the red pill is right. None of them put their ages on Facebook. Ah, oh, dude, anybody who puts their age and personal details on Facebook deserves what they get. But yeah, it's if it didn't work, like how, it, whether it's true or not, if it doesn't work, what's the point, right? Uh, Shaddy Ramadan, $5. John, trips on moving to, tips on moving to another country. Did you learn the language before or after? I'm tired of America and we have similar taste in women, Lumafau. Uh, I just. You know, me coming here, I, it was just typical John fashion. It was reckless. I had one way ticket, twenty five hundred bucks in my pocket, and I didn't speak. I thought I, I I watched Naruto Shippuden. I watched the entire series, and I thought I had Japanese down. And when I got here, I was like, "Fuck, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about." So now, <laughs> now I'm a strong beginner in Japanese, and so uh, I take pride in that. You but, sound like the lawyer on The Simpsons. I watched half an episode. By the way, of John, I. By the way, John, I messaged you about that. I want to ask you some questions about learning Japanese because I'm looking to get in. Like, I, I speak like four languages already, but I don't speak any of the Asian languages. So, any tips you can give me is good. You need to level up, Carl. 80s anime. Four languages. Nandeska. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, Jerry I mean... here with the 10. Speak up, John. Keep the super chats coming. Ryan needs a new shirt. Dude, this is like one of my favorite shirts. I will, I will remove you from chat for that. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> and Ethan Bahuli, the RSD 600s. Hey, RSD has a currency now? Are these fat Owen bucks? That's awesome. I'm ready for death. 
Yeah, there's no better way. Like I'm working out now and listening to you guys. Dude, well, just awesome. so you know, the like RSD bucks can be tr can be converted directly into cocaine. Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think last one, Johnny B. <laughs> um, aren't strong independent women roles in media created by male directors and writers? Exactly. Well, I mean, yeah, but then once they get enough of them in there, they can uh, boot them out. Like, isn't that what Weinstein had? Of course they are. They have all that power to chicks, then they all teamed up and told them to get out. Yep. Uh, so he, what he's what he's getting at is it's it's men's fault. It's men's fault that women are that m women bought into this strong independent thing. And it's like it's men's fault for not calling it earlier. But now we're now that we're in it, no women actually bear the responsibility for this too. Sorry guys. No, but yeah. Like let's be honest though, it's not a woman or men's fault. It's Adam Smith's fault. That son of because a bitch. If, if we're very honest, like the whole reason to push the strong independent women narrative and women's liberation is to get more money spent. Right. Yes. Like, yes, so, exactly. Like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Let, let's say theoretically, uh, you send like a dude, <laughs> but like theoretically, you send a guy into an Ikea. Like you have a, let's say you have a 50 square meter. I'm not sure how much that is in square feet apartment, right? You have to fill with shit. You send a dude into an Ikea, you send the women into an Ikea, <laughs> and, and you're going to have the guy comes out with one chair, one table, a bed that's comfortable, and a huge-ass TV. <laughs> you send a woman into that same Ikea, she's going to put down like eight times as much money buying shit that you technically don't need in your goddamn house. And women are just more prone to nesting and that's a good thing from like an evolutionary perspective it's a negative thing if you send your girl into ikea with your fucking credit card if like legit like if you send your girl like not put your girl on your credit card to start with but like asking your girl to build a nest for you it's going to cost you about 15 times more than if you just bought that shit yourself you see and, Carl, here's, here's what they're going to say though and here's what the strong independent woman narrative will say is that that what you're saying right now is bullshit. It's like what strong independent woman will say is, no, that's bullshit. I'll go in and I'll I'll be as stoic as a man. I'll go in there with that credit card and I'll come out with, uh, you know, I won't spend nearly as much as he would. They'll, they'll flip the script on you. And that they, that that's what they, they'll say that that's what they do. Now, in practice, they probably don't do so anything remotely like that. But or. If they do go and they decide to overspend with your credit card, they will say that they deserve it, that they're because they've done so or uh, what is it? It's the same rationale for women who say, well, I'm a stay at home mom and therefore I deserve compensation for that. The hardest uh, job just, in the world. A, yeah. Well, to be honest, though, it's the same thing that I get shit for because like my girl will literally call me up and be like, I'm at this store. I want to buy this. Do you actually want me to buy this? Yeah, like she like she yeah. she will legit send me pictures from like she had pictures yesterday because she was at like a kitchen store and she was like, "You said you needed a new pan. Do you want me to buy this set for you?" And I was like, "Nope, don't buy that shit. I'll go and get my own." Dude, I love that. That's my policy is no now too. <laughs> Just to say no, yeah. But I no, think but bro, like, you're right but too on the. It's a it's a thing though. Like with me, it's more like. Don't fuck with my kitchen. I think women, <laughs> women like strong, independent women like that who who buy into that. Who I, I think I think all women do to some extent, but like the ones that really sort of like uh, digest it and internalize it. I think that they believe that they would make better decisions because every single one of these girls who like in this thread that we yeah, started, they're control with, freaks. Every single one was like. I am just as stoic and just as utilitarian and just as, as any man. And if you can't handle a strong woman, then you're a weak man kind of thing. Like, of course, I turn it around on you at the end. But the fact Dude. is they, they believe that they are because they've been masculinized, because they think that that's what makes them attractive, because they think that that's, they really, uh, that that's their ego investment, right? Their ego is invested in the idea that, that's, that the more masculinized they are and the less feminine that they actually are, that that is what you know, they base their personality on. But then, of course, they also want to say, but I'm also feminine and I can also wear a dress. Well, and I think I you're talking to the two different uh, parts uh, of their brain. Time. That's the problem, Rolo. You're yeah, talking about like, the frontal lobe, but it's the limbic brain. 
like I'm no every, no every. man ever bought throw pillows. Let's leave it at that. Like <laughs> no man ever bought fucking throw pillows. That is true. <laughs> but yeah, I was just thinking, Rolo, that thing when you're describing it, it sounds to me like you always hear these. I would never sleep with that kind of guy. He's a misogynist. And like their frontal lobe is like, yeah, I like this. I like this. Get him in front of some dude who's a bit of an asshole. Their limbic brain kicks in. And all of a sudden, well, this one doesn't count. Yeah. So I honestly think those women truly believe it because they're not talking to the part of their brain that actually makes the decisions. They're talking to the frontal lobe by committee. Emo instinct, emotion, and reason. That's women's natural proclivity. So yeah. it's not that they come into, it's not instinct, reason, and then emotion. It's it's the other way around. And that's just simply how women are. There's nothing wrong with that. It's the, what's wrong with it. No, is, these two guys below us wouldn't have a career if that wasn't the yeah, case. That was, like, John, sorry. Troy. Seriously, how many times have a girl been like, I don't like you, you're a dick. And then all of a sudden you get the tingles going and they're like, they'll work out how to make an exception. How, well, due to clause seven in Paris six, you guys are actually not like that. Oh, yeah. Completely. Yeah, completely. Him this week. This <laughs> well, the current, like the girl I'm currently listen, with. Ryan, why do you think I was late? This happened like 45 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, attraction, attraction comes through friction, doesn't it? Right. So, like, it comes through there being that sort of like psychological yeah. kind of like, you know, like that, like that coming Polarity. up against each other. You know, exactly. It's like your tit exactly. fucking in between the limbic brain and the frontal lobe. Yeah, the secret to a healthy relationship is polarity. Exactly. That's yes. Exactly. That's why Rolo, I fucking cannot <laughs> I cannot date an extroverted girl. I will fight her on a in the octagon before I date an extrovert. I'll I will sleep with an extrovert, but I need when it when it comes to a long long term, I need like a girl that just doesn't Women are extroverts until they meet a guy who is more extroverted than they are. Then they turn into introverts. Mm. <clears throat> All right. Run let's uh, another run. RSD run. buck, by the way, Rolo. You mind taking this one? Yeah. He's going to finish preventative medicine. I'm ready for Thanks. death. <laughs> Thanks for the deep work. He's Albanian. Oh, so RSD is in Albania. Ah, okay. <laughs> and uh, then uh, oh, the other one. For that. Oh, yeah. Keep reading. <laughs> and then from Joel, any thoughts on countries without independent women versus Western countries? I don't know. Uh, ask Roosh. See how that works out. <laughs> well, yeah. to be honest, I did crack Roosh the missing, joke because Roosh like is missing some... one critical factor, which is game. Roosh doesn't fucking yeah. have game. He's domain dependent. Yeah. But we had the, this fun discussion the other day, like I got into with like, okay, this is going to be the age of the women. Women are going to take over the Western world in the next 50 years. And I'm like, yeah, it's that's probably going to happen. Women are going to take over and do the narrative in the Western world for like 50 years. And then, you know, Islam is going to conquer us and bring the patriarchy right back. And that's just how it's going to go. Because ultimately, like women have very a lot of good qualities in my opinion they're nurturing they're caring they want to help everyone that's why like the environment people are mostly women the vegans are mostly yeah. women <clears throat> the etc the it's crossfit weird. people are mostly women they're 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 like good people from an emotional standpoint but like i wouldn't like i love my mom she's very caring she's very nurturing but i wouldn't put her her in charge of the economy because then it, like suddenly my taxes go from like 45% to 78%. My mom just ran the most lucrative Airbnb into the fucking ground as soon as I stepped away from it. And <laughs> like <laughs> women, no, but like legit women are the only, like government and like government is mostly women. Mm -hmm. And the fact that government could lose money selling cocaine is yeah. just the ultimate example of women in business. And like it's not trash talking. There are like I had this talk well, with true. Ryan. We did lose money selling weed in Ontario. <laughs> no, but like Ryan, we had this discussion earlier because like I referenced like the uh, the U.S. Marines did a study on women in combat, right? Mm -hmm. And their conclusion was in essence that okay, like ninety eight percent of female soldiers aren't suitable for like frontline, like Marine recon. Um, SEAL teams, like these 82nd Airborne type squads. But you have 2% of women who can actually pull it off and they do it really fucking well. And yeah. the reasoning there is like, okay, you, let, let's say you have 2% of a population that can do something extremely well. Okay, you let them do that extremely well. You just make the entry requirements so high that you only get that 2% who are really fucking good at it. 
It's essentially the, like the Vince Neil argument of business. Like you get the people who are really fucking good at something and you let them do what they're really fucking good at. And all the people who want to get into it but suck at it, you find a way to tell them to fuck off. I think we kind of did that then with feminist chicks, didn't we? We call it spinsternum. <laughs> I just love, all right again, if you can act like this and get a man you're good <laughs> i just look you guys got to realize like now more than ever you have to relentlessly work on yourself self-improvement as from the moment you turn 18 you got to be focusing every single day on gaining and maintaining making muscles making money and learning game because you're always going to need money be before you die you're always going to need a muscular body to stay healthy before you die and you're always, as a man watching this content especially, you're always going to have a consistent need for new pussy. So now is the time you guys have to relentlessly work on yourself because these girls in the West, it is hilarious. They are self-destructing at an alarming rate. So like when you just focus on yourself and then also business and stuff like this, because they're, they're flooding the market with these chicks, but they're all incompetent. Like you can clean up in the workplace and as long as you're a competent worker. So now is the time. Like everybody's like, oh, it's COVID time. It's blah, blah, blah. Like wham, 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 whatever. Now you should be relentlessly working on yourself during like 2020 should be your monk mode. Now for all you dorks that like yeah. don't approach girls, you're like, <laughs> oh, yeah. you're on monk mode. Is now you're on monk mode. So 2021, you better come out jack. You better lose that 20 pounds. You better come up 20 G's more on the annual. <laughs> You know, so. I get it. Gyms are closed, but fuck, I can go jogging. You can handle it. Just jog and eating. eat a little less. Just fast. Just that don't works put too. Food in your mouth. Trend. That's mm. the only solution. Yeah, yeah. Trend. Uh, like th th thirty the seconds of masculine. Uh, thirty seconds to masculinity, guys. The way to get masculine without cold showers with other dudes. <laughs> open trend and drop them off in vegas carl that's probably why carl or that's why john lit that place on fire in vegas to, last week i want to ask john something about the no, but john john had a question for me first let's see okay, okay go ahead, go ahead. You ever, have you ever injected trend before carl yes i have i've also done coke <laughs> yeah i, I <laughs> on the show so, so on the show. Not, not on the show no <laughs> so steroids are completely legal in japan so everybody knows I have tried trend before. It is terrifying. Like what Carl is saying is real. I <laughs> but like two, I pinned twice. I pinned two times for two weeks. After that, I was like, I'm done. I'm gonna fucking catch okay. a murder charge. Why is he, <laughs> I, well, why is he like, terrified? Like, what, what's the effect like? Dude, I'm not it, sure if this is gonna get Ryan's is, uh, channel it, banned. But wait, Joy, if you have to do just like one steroid, you want to go with Vinstrol. So because it, horse it, one. No, Vinstrol is it's essentially mm. a cutting steroid, so you don't bloat up a lot of water. It will put less mass on you than doing like DECA or something like that. But if you do just Vinstrol, it's going to get you that lean, muscular, hard look. Otherwise, you're gonna if you do anything else, like you do the like like you, if you do trend, like like just don't do like doing trend is like the heroin of steroids just don't fucking do it yeah, you realize they use trend on like livestock right that, that, yeah i know so, like they, just trend don't go trend balloon is what they give to cattle to make them more yes. muscular yeah. <laughs> what's, them it, what's it actually like when you're on it you just go nuts you just like you like it, it, you get you get really strong really quick when you lift weights and you have to eat protein on top of it but yeah like especially guys like us troy you're like aggressively horny like Mate, I'm, I'm aggressive I, I, it sounds tempting i tell you what when they when they lift the band i'm gonna come over to tokyo let's fucking let's get well, on it that's the thing i've heard guys they were having problems because the their joints don't uh, grow as I'll fast as their muscles and they're tearing them shit up yeah that's oh, yeah. the biggest issue with steroids it's like you grow muscle can grow a lot faster than um the muscle attachments can do so you may put a lot of weight on your bench, but your muscles can handle the lift, but your tendons can't actually handle that weight. That's one thing. And trend dick is fucking real, man. It's like whiskey dick on literally fucking steroids, which is kind of ironic, I know. Uh, look at this, Johnny. You fixed John. You fixed Vic here, Nova. Ten dollars super chat. Got my act together. Business, money, growing investments, and fit. Call me blue pill, but it's kind of a shame. Even a quality woman means still settling for a H. Oh, e. Mm -hmm. Is this one of your guys from Body Language, Johnny? Probably. I don't know. They all belong in the Hot Dude Army. <laughs> Sounds like a Hot Dude Army guy. <laughs> I I gotta ask John about this though, because like well, this is Rule Zero, and we can do whatever we want. <laughs> um, 
the the girl uh what's her name a cooter girl cooter pet <laughs> girl <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. i you guys have to I, one of the i i have sort of a a um uh, malicious intent in all of this is that like one of the things that sort of led me to this was not just the 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 conversation that we started with here but it was also the fact that i did well, when was that it was monday morning that i came on your show i believe we were, so yeah, we yeah. The breakdown of of i i don't know her name i'm i apologize i just call her cooter pageant girl um, keep it that way <laughs> yeah and, you know, if you see her you'll understand why um but uh no she was very full of herself right she's one of these girls who's like sort of like strong independent girl she's good looking enough that like she gets male attention and she probably has a lot of beta orbiters i think she even admitted to having a lot of beta orbiters. Seventy thousand on tiktok yes yes so, <laughs> so she's she's playing the game she's definitely in the you know the offer funnel marketing gig right now she's doing that whole thing and probably doing it pretty well um she's and not. But she, but here's the thing is when, when she sees that kind of money or when she sees that kind of like, so see, I think one of the things about the hustle economy that's really dangerous to the sort of a strong independent woman mindset is that when they see 70,000 like Instagram beta orbiters and then you combine that with money, that's when women get big heads and they get even, I talk about women's hubris all the time. Like Tommy Laren's a good example of this. This is a woman who's, who's, you know, made a name for herself on the strong independent woman tip, but she's also, she arguably is a good looking girl, right? Who's now sort of running headlong into the wall or knows that she's going to. And so she's having a, a real conflict right now. But this girl that you were talking to, um, the, the, the cooter girl, she was very, very uh, full of herself, let's just say. And, and John managed to diffuse that by being, by being the strongest male personality that she's probably ever encountered and now, and I've seen the, I've, uh, and forgive me if I'm revealing too much here, but like she, she has, she wants to like hook up with you or she wants to I'm like meet anything, you or she but... wants to work with you or something like that now. So it's gone <laughs> from this guy's the son of a bitch uh, misogynist to, yeah, he's the strongest male personality that I know. Yeah. yeah. And no, limbic she, brain's she... a bitch, man. She's going to come, we're, we're going to come, she's going to like come to Tokyo and we're going to like do some photo shoots and stuff. So. Really cool, but um, you know, <laughs> that's I how easy it is. That's yeah. how easy it is. She belongs to the streets, you know. She's self, <laughs> self, I self admittedly on the interview, I was like, I was like, so you belong to the streets? She's like, totally. <laughs> See, <laughs> I know. Uh, hey, Troy, you've been quiet there for a while. Come on, chime in. Let's hear some. Let's hear some Brit wisdom. We need uh, to Ryan, put that. Put that quote back up later on. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I tell you. Yeah. Go ahead, Troy. I was just—I you know, don't think I've been quiet, but uh, but no, I mean the the interview that uh, the interview that John did was was pretty cool with that girl, to be honest. I mean, like I was, and, and it really brought home for me this whole thing of like, because um, because again, you know, it's just like what I can't get my head around is why they think that it's attractive to be a ball breaker or why they think it's attractive to be a yeah. girl boss and everything. I mean, if you, you want to be that, fine, you know, be my guest. But don't think that that equates to attractiveness because it, it just it just doesn't. And they need to get real with that as well, you know. They won't In the same way, the guys that. guys need to get right, real about certain things also. You know, we need to get get real about the fact that yes, we get you know the re game is all about rejection. You, that you're not going to get most women on the planet. You know, like there are you know, you know you, you you've got to you've got to be realistic. You've got to you've got to work on your game, your muscles, your money, all the rest of it. You know, we've got to get real with those things. But women need to get real about the fact that. The things that they've been told make them hot are not the things that actually men actually appeal to men, right. and, that, and that's an important distinction. You know, I'm glad you I'm glad you brought that up, Troy, because uh, another, uh, as you might guess, I've got an essay for this one. Um, <laughs> what I I wrote this one, and and I'll come to this in just a second, Ryan. Keep it there. Um, I wrote this essay called "Separating Values," and there used to be, the, and I don't know if she's a feminist icon or a writer or something like that. Her name was Robin Korth. And I've written about her in the past. I know Donovan's talked about her on his show, like probably like a few, maybe six or eight months ago. Um, but she, uh, the reason she came to my attention is because she's a 60, well, at the time she was 67 or 68 or something like that. She was like pushing 70. She was in her mid 60s, let's say. And she was getting with a younger guy and the younger guy wanted her to wear lingerie and wanted to do, you know, dress herself up to be a little bit more like basically trying to change the way she looks so she would be more attractive to him. 
right? Because that's what you're supposed to do, right? You're supposed to talk about what turns you on. Like, let's let's communicate. Let's have open communication. And she got completely offended by the fact that this guy was telling her what she should wear and how she should act. And if, you know, the sex would be better if she did these things, right? This is what I like kind of thing. And she just and wrote an article and just flipped out. And the reason she was flipping out was because of what, what Troy's saying here is that she conflated her personal worth with her sexual market value, which at 60 some odd years old was pretty, pretty low. And so here's this guy trying to help her, like say, hey, look, if you dress this way, if you did these things, you'd be a much sexier. Uh, you know, we maybe things would work out a little bit better, kind of trying to help her along. But the problem is she couldn't get over herself. Because this is what women do, and this is this sort of a larger a larger problem or a larger narrative, I think, that goes with women, is that they tend to conflate what they believe men should be attracted to about them. They conflate that with their own personal worth. So if you're not attractive to her, or if you're you're it means you're uh, you're uh, what threatened by strong women and you can't handle that's like you can't handle me kind of thing. And, if you can't handle me at my worst, then you can't handle me at my best, or you, you don't deserve me at my best kind of thing. What that is representative of is women who take their uh, personal worth, what they believe should be their personal worth, just like John's girl, just like the, the girl he was talking to, is like that. these things that I think should make me attractive to men, my independence, my strength, my whatever the hell that means kind of thing, my job, my, you know, my maverick spirit or whatever, that is my personal worth and men should find that attractive. And when they don't find that attractive, then they make up reasons why men are infantile, why men only want to get with 22-year-olds, why men are threatened, why, why men have fragile egos, any number of bullshit reasons that we've been hearing about since like the, the early 70s. It's the same language to the letter. The same language is men, ha men are fragile. Men are this. Men are ridiculous. Men are boys. Uh, they'll never grow up. They only want, you know, young chippies, that kind of stuff. The reason why it's offensive to them is because they think that men should be attracted to them for all of these esoteric kind of business alpha male type qualities and they find that they're not, when they internalize that as their personal worth, they think that it should be their sexual market value, and <clears throat> they get really, really offended by that, and they freak out, and they lose their mind. Yeah, Rolo, I can yeah, picture if we're honest, that though, like, the, the easiest way to kind of look at it, the way I've always seen it is, like, you can always see what category your girl falls in if you bring her to, like, a family type event. Because usually in my family, like the women are in the kitchen, they're preparing food, they're helping out, etc. It's like a natural thing, like a girl, a good girl will go in and she'll actually ask the women, like, do you need help? What can I do for you? The other one will go sit with the men and start pounding alcohol. Right. <laughs> like, 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 if you're a girl at that, faced with the two choices, I can sit with the men, watch a football game and pound beers or I can go help out with the women in the kitchen. If she chooses to pound beers and watch football, yeah, sorry, dude. You don't want to wife that shit up. She belongs me, in the streets. Yeah. I was going to say, picture that bedroom, though, Rolo, where the, the guy sitting there is like, Karen, can you stop nagging me for like two minutes? I can't keep it hard. Yeah. And then finally yeah. she starts nagging him for that. He just gets up and goes, I'm reading a book. I'm out of here. <laughs> it's worth saying though it's worth just saying though that guys can suffer from a similar delusion though because dudes will be there think that you know the, the sort of head of the local church kind of dude will be like well i'm an honorable upstanding member of the community so women should be should be attracted to me right and this is and, and so men can suffer from a sort of equivalent delusion which is kind of at the heart of the make women great again kind of ethos because what that is basically saying is these women, these these thoughts or, or whatever, you know, these degenerate modern women, they should they should want to sleep with me because I'm a honorable right. decent guy so and I'm Christian. And great with a job. Yeah, and exactly. And and that's a delusion as well. So that you know, like um it's it, you know, both genders suffer from it. But yeah, it's um it's, it's, probably, it's kind of funny how I kind of get that. Like, I think, Troy, you, I think you have a point that both genders are kind of suffering from gender confusion at the moment. About what is viscerally attractive to the other gender. Well, That's the just point. On, yeah, but just on the basis that, like, men have been told you need to be more emotional, you need to be more open, you need to have more feminine qualities, you need to kind mm. of cater. Like, it's basically uh, Rolo's argument with Jung. And I think a lot of the time what happens is like Jung has this concept, which I really like to explain this because he talks about like the inner male and the inner female. 
And the inner male in a man is stoic, it's protective, it has a lot of good qualities. And the mm. inner feminine in a woman is nurturing, it's caring, it has a lot of good qualities. But if you put the inner masculine in a woman, you get a perversion of it, to use that expression, where like the woman becomes like a dude who just shot up on a fuck ton of trend. And the guy becomes like a dude who just did like a 18 lines of fucking estrogen. So you essentially get like the modern hipster male who's crying on YouTube like you're a white fucking male, leave Britney alone. And the woman becomes like an unbearable ball buster that's just too like even regardless of how hot she is. You wouldn't keep her around because she just makes your life a pain in the ass. And I think most men, ultimately, we want an easy life, right? Yeah. We just want the women in our life to be a positive. We don't want them to be a pain in our ass. I think, like, all women are going to be a pain in the ass on some level, let's be honest. But mm -hmm. it's, like, it, you, the hot crazy scale, but it's basically hot versus pain in the ass scale. I, I was confused with with uh, with Troy's uh, example there. I think you're, and also sort of referring back to what Carl's saying is, the more we masculinize women, the more they take on the they assume the same things men do. Like when we when we talk about how uh, what is it like men tend to overestimate sexual interest in women, whereas women tend to underestimate sexual interest in men. Although maybe that's changed now, but that's the, the we we tend to th or or what is it? Women tend to uh, underreport their sexual partners. Men tend to overreport their sexual partners. Do we not see that happening in masculinized women right now? If we switch them out, we see women who are proud of their notch count now. We see women who are uh, who believe that what makes them like a, would make an attractive male is what should make them attractive. And then they wrap their egos up in that and they get very offended by that. So when when Troy says that, uh, you know, women tend to expect men to find things attractive in them, that's because that's exactly what exactly what men do. Right. We we tend to o overestimate uh, sexual interest based on what it what we are. Right. Like uh, I, I, I wrote this about alpha. Like what's what what is the essence of kind of alpha? Right. And a lot of guys think that their behaviors and their what they what it is that they have makes them alpha. That's exactly what women are conflating right now. They believe I'm an alpha female. How come men are just dropping at my feet? Well, because you're ugly and you're masculine and yeah. you're you're revolting. You're, and I don't mean that. In, I don't mean that in like. Okay, I mean that in the clinical sense. There is a sense of revulsion Ugly because a I'm a heterosexual man, and I don't want to bang another guy. Okay, <laughs> and if you're if you're as masculine, or if you expect me to be as ma if we're, there's no such thing as an equality, and that's why I wanted to get into this thing right here where Amber Johnson was saying, she's like, what an antiquated line of thought to think that a woman can't be strong and feminine. See, that's right there is the is the lie of androgyny, okay? You can be masculine, super masculine and super feminine at the same time, all right? Yeah. So it's like that you want to know where uh what was it the the classic depictions of like Satan in the back in the old days like uh, what is it uh uh Baphomet. If you look at Baphomet, you'll see that it's like half of a, she, she, it, it has half a boob and then a male half and it's like half female, half male. Right. That's that was a classic, uh, like, I think a Wicca uh, goddess worship ideal of what like the devil was back in the day. It was this balance between male and female. And that's where this kind of go and I'm not saying this is woo woo magical thinking. I'm just saying that's the symbolic nature of what she's basically talking about here. And then she says, obviously, you haven't met most of my friends. <laughs> no, we have not. Why don't you introduce us? Yeah. And then she says, I'm a strong minded well, woman. Lawrence, friends. I'm a strong-minded woman, and I believe it takes a strong man to love a strong woman. Okay, and we don't have gender roles in our home. He is a stay-at-home dad. After 20 years of military service, I work full-time. Like, he what the hell? Does she not know that means he's retired? He's not a stay-at-home dad? Yeah, he's exactly. And so, but here's the thing is, they basically switched roles. So when women say, oh, we have an equal partnership. No, you don't. 
There's no such thing as an equal partnership when it comes to men and women. There's always going to be a dominant and there's going to be a submissive. Even in homosexual couples, you're always going to see the dom. You're going to have the top and you're going to have the bottom. Okay, You're going to have the dom and the sub in that relationship. And it's because we're human beings. That's what we do. We look for a masculine. We look for a feminine. We look for the dominant masculine and the submissive fem feminine. And that's how it's been because that's the way we evolved. It's not because of some like old school chauvinistic, uh, you know, or super religious puritanical nonsense. It's because that's the way the genders and the sexes evolved. So you want to say, well, we've evolved beyond that and everything else. Well, when you do that, you not only become a, you're not a strong and feminine woman. You're not a masculine and a feminine. You're just a really bad feminine. And maybe you're like, uh, like what, uh, what, uh, what Carl was saying, you're a perversion of that masculine or else you are a very good feminine woman. And you're sort of like, weak in the masculine side there's no that balance does not exist now i like to come back to like the chased by a lion analogy if you and your girl are being chased by a lion and you say okay babe go right you can't have a bitch that stops you like why are you telling me what to do <laughs> like what's wrong with you Let's have a discussion about whether or not we should run left or right away from this lion. It just doesn't work that way. Uh, and uh, uh, like, uh, I just find like the least attractive quality in a woman is a desire to debate every decision. Like I'm, and it goes both ways, kind of, because like you don't have to debate every decision your girl makes. You shouldn't have to debate every decision you make. But the big ones are made in unison to some degree with a person who leads it. And it's Ryan told me this about like the way he him and his girl um, fix the kitchen because they're both like big fucking food stops. And it's just about figuring out that level of thing. Like you can't have two leaders in a relationship and you can't have two followers in a relationship, two followers tend to work better than two leaders because you get open conflict with two leaders. With two followers, you just basically take 55 minutes to figure out if you want Sprite or Coke Zero with your fucking Mickey D's. Mm. But I think that's kind of the balance you need to look for. And I think the best example is like BPD girls. You know who they find the most attractive and the only relationship they can make work? With Sims. extreme no extreme narcissists, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because essentially yeah, to work with them. no, but to work with a BPD <laughs> girl, you have to be emotionally cold and fundamentally self centered. And I think most men today are a little bit too emotional and a little bit not self centered enough. You know, what really exactly. gets BPD girls going is when you're narcissistic. And you fuck them and you come quickly and you don't care about their orgasm. That really makes them go. Ah, yeah. Yeah. You know, we have <laughs> orgasm too now. I'm like, nah, shut up. Go make me a sandwich. <laughs> oh, John, like, you know, do you know how a real man knows if his girl is sexually satisfied? Oh, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Who gives a shit? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think what Carl just said is very important, though, and that's what I'm trying to teach in my course at the moment. Is it's like basically, you know, guys need to get more selfish. They need to get more narcissistic. They need to get a little bit more psychopathic in the sense of um, toning down the empathy a bit, mm -hmm. um, and they need to get more Machiavellian. You know, the dark triad characteristics. You know, we are all brought up to be too arms around the world, you know, seeing Kumbaya together. And it's sort of like, I mean, that's that's great. And it's great for community building, perhaps. Uh, but it doesn't do you any good in the sexual marketplace. And you need to turn up the dial on those slightly more dark yeah. uh, characteristics if you're going to reach um, apex level uh, at this stuff. Yeah, and point. this is why I love like, Troy's book. Like, one of my favorite game books. Like, I have a couple of them, but... Choice How to Be the Asshole That Women Love is actually one of the better game books I've, I've read. It's like I put that and Rush's original game as like the two fundamentals that people should probably read if they're just getting into this. Thank you, sir. High praise indeed coming from uh, Mr. Black Label Logic. I was going to say, okay, roll those ones for you. There's two super chats. Uh, well, you can see this one. Do you want to save the West, sir? 
Do I want to save the West? Oh, uh, you've been requested with a ten dollars super chat, so it kind of has to happen now. I, before I have the question, I say or just well, president. Thanks. Yeah, I would love to. Yeah, make me president. I, who will who will be in my cabinet? All the guys in Rule Zero will be in my cabinet. Don't call me the president, really. That's <laughs> like, <laughs> come on, Rolo. You have to have AO, I, I, I AOC in your I cabinet, like President no, Rolo. Rolo. And uh, I, got called, Cortez. I got called a false god yesterday. I'm like, oh, that's a step up from cult leader. <laughs> nice. Everybody's got to make you something. At least they're not calling you dad 2.0, put you no. in a hospital like Peterson. No, no, I will never be. Never call me the president, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the other the other president has, has already stated that he is going to destroy feminism. That it's uh, going to happen, and he's also stated he's going to be a billionaire. They get in the way of the president there. And he's also he's also stated he's going to be a billionaire by forty. So let's see how well those. Yeah. Um, let's see if he can destroy that rent next month. That's <laughs> <million. laughs> billionaire. Yeah. All right. So then, beastly nerds five dollar one again for Rolo showing support. Something new to add to the topic. New movie that's coming out: American wow. Pie. Girls rule. Is a girl going to fuck a pie now? No, no, it's American Pie, and I don't know why they keep using this. They're only using the title because they're going back to the original movie, which actually was good. But this one is just—it's just crap. What they're know. doing here is like National Lampoon. Once they got Corey Feldman, it was right. just well. It's what the whole point of it is to just do a, a gender uh, flip, flip the script, right? So now it's not guys acting like beer and boobs, like moronic idiots getting laid and having a good time, because that's a party, right? That's funny. Yeah. But like now what they're trying to do is flip the script. They're probably they're basically trying to do American Pie one with an all female cast. That's all it really is. So and it what, does how does the girl fuck a pie? That's what I can't figure out. Yeah. It's a it's a squash, man. It's a squash. Let's just <laughs> leave it at that. No, but like I, I think this Semantics, is one of the funnier Ryan, things. Semantics. It's uh, <laughs> like I like the female flipping scripts to some extent, but they need to actually do that accurately. Like Bright State was actually funny, and I I say that as a guy, I, like I don't think women can be funny. In as a general rule, but I Bridesmaid was legit, actually a funny movie. Because it wow. like it kind of gave me a flashback to a lot of the girls I've parted with over the years, and Ryan knows this. He's mm -hmm. far. He's parted with Quebecois girls, oh, and it's fight. just like you know, like the girl who took a shit in the sink. Everyone knows that shit, right? Who's it says poopy pants? Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I can kind of see flipping it that way. It's just kind of wrong to assume that you can take a certain narrative, flip the gender roles and assume the narrative will be the same because it won't like American pie. The original was guys looking to get drunk and get laid. Yep. That's a guy thing. Women mm. aren't on that. Okay. Let's get smashed and get laid thing. That's a male unique thing. A seven minute like, film. Like Rolo has been married for like, how long have you been married? Rolo? Like 20, 30 years, 24 years. Yeah. And like, if, you ask yourself, like, ideally, if you designed your lifestyle, you'd want to be able to bang, like, a countless parade of 18-year-old girls coming into your house, and your wife would be cool with it because that's your life. Like, if you ask your wife, what would your ideal life be? It would probably be similar to what you have now, oh, minus the 18-year-old right girls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was just going to say, is like, when you, like, you ever seen that movie Old School? Oh, yeah. With, with Farrell yeah. And stuff. Imagine flipping the script and making that an all female cast. Imagine how how well that would go. Well, Ghostbusters, Oceans Ghostbusters. Eight. There's already example after example and, of it. And we and we think that's gonna be funny and we think that it's gonna it's gonna play well with this They're generation. Own, right? And it doesn't because it's it's still you know, people are still people. Well, it's know? also disingenuous, man. I just want to see it. Like, like what go what's the graphic for that movie, right? Well, like, go to, like, any Eastern European country what's or any Asian country, any Latin American country that still has gender roles. And they can understand why, like, old school is funny because it's men taken to the extreme of what men are like. But you're not going to have a fun thing if it's suddenly uh, Amy Schumer running naked like Will Ferrell uh. does in that movie running like Amy the Tank, Amy the Tank. <laughs> it's not funny because it's so and an, it's the antithesis of what women are supposed to be about. If you want to actually make women funny, you need to actually take what women are and 
take it to the logical extreme and then make a hypothesis on that. That's how you make women funny. Like, <clears throat> let's say the girl who just she moves in with her boyfriend and she goes nuts. She spends like 300 grand buying shit for his like two square, two square foot bed apartment. And it's like the entire apartment is pink. Okay, that's funny because men can recognize that if they gave their girl a credit card and let her go nuts and she was crazy, that would happen. Yeah, there always women has to be a find, little bit of truth to humor. Well, women find it funny because they can see, yeah, you know, if, you know, Dan Bilzerian gave me his entire bank account and told me to go nuts on his house, this would probably fucking happen. And that's the whole thing. It's it's a truth in the bottom of it. Like, I, I legit, like, I know there are women who will go out there and pound 18 Miller lights and have a cold shower afterwards. Oh, they'll do a lot more than that. Oh. But for me, it's just, it's not the inherent... Milk. You can't, well, you can't characterize that and make it funny because it's anti women in a sense. It's just antithetical to who they are. That's why they're so repulsive. That's why I left America. Like, because the majority of the girls are like that. And I just, I, I got back to America when I was in uh, 2016, right? But you I went spent, to Orlando, to be fair. But still, it, it's better than, listen, Orlando is, uh, it's not bad because there's a lot of hot Latinas and there's a lot of good, like, hot white girls that go to uh, UCF. If you just if you if you use the UCF, which is the largest school in Florida, um, you know as your as your sourcing ground, you're gonna do just fine. But anyways, um, <clears throat> but anyways, the, the point I'm trying to make is like I got back to Orlando when I was two, in 2016, okay, and um, after spending three years abroad, right, two years in Japan and then one year in Hawaii, which is like the Hawaiian girls are very feminine; they're not like the Westernized mainland girls. So when I got back, I was just like just realizing how masculine and how competitive these girls were. Like, I just didn't want to like deal with that. Like what Rolo said earlier is so funny. We mentioned that I, when I'm like, when these girls try to challenge me, I'm like, I'm not a homosexual. Like I don't want your <laughs> masculine like energy. Like I want femininity and I'm not crazy. You're the one that's crazy that you're the one that's wrong. And so I just thought, okay, I'm 30. I wake up. I'm still want to bang. i still have like energy. And I thought to myself, there is no way I'm spending my sexual prime, my, good times in a life like with this second rate pussy like straight up and so i fucking packed up and left i was there for 11 months 11 months and i came back to asia and i'm sorry but american girls are bottom of the barrel especially these new ones like 95 percent of these girls belong in the streets and that's why i say ejaculate evacuate because that's pretty much all they're bringing to the table and no, hey, but i agree wrong, with john like i think it. i think if you want to really look for girls who are actually worth <laughs> dealing with you either want to deal with girls from south america or girls girls from asia yeah agreed. to some extent like you have some eastern european countries but at least look for like a solid family background and ideally a family that's somewhat conservative yeah definitely. that's essentially what you want to look for and you're and gonna that, have to deal with like, some shit so those are prerequisites but those are not guarantees for you guys in the audience because i met some guys like oh she was a trad and she loved her dad but she's like sucked 100 dicks like th this is not these aren't like safety nets they're just you know levels of screening that you have to they're like, heuristics you know. it's yeah. a risk risk reduction more or less like exactly if you go to like if you go to the uh, united arab emirates you are going to have the odd girl that took it up the ass like 200 times but oh, yeah. odds are that your average girl is going to be less of a problem to deal with than if you go to South Florida, where most of them have probably fucked her cousin. R Rolo, Cooter girl went to uh, Dubai. I, I, uh, yeah, there's a yeah. You yeah, asked that too, didn't you? I you threw a little sneak diss at her. Like, oh, so you've been to Dubai a couple times, huh? I was like, oh, <laughs> no, oh yeah. yeah. Rule of thumb, if, you, if the girl says she's been to Dubai and it was not a family vacation where you have family pictures... Yeah, no. no it's an kidding. instant yeah. like no. There were no, there were no family water pictures. By herself on the, that beach, like get out of here. And who's and you, like, your friends taking a photo of you? Get out of here. She does not sound and, like an IT and contractor. Like, rule of thumb, if you have to bang someone from the UK, go with a girl from Glasgow and don't wife her off because girls from Glasgow are extremely skilled at oral for some reason. Not sure why. <laughs> what's your, yeah, data, what's your data set on that, Carl? <laughs> I was. Oh, gonna... it's only about eight to ten, but. Uh, 
Okay, well, that's not bad. I mean, that's a uh, not not <laughs> yeah, a Troy with the puffing out his chest. Oh, no, but like Troy. Out, okay, okay, Troy. Let's let's uh, question. I would just I, I would just keep it to what you said at the beginning and just don't, if you don't go with girls from the UK, that's probably going to be your best bet. To be fair. No, but let's be honest. If you had to tell a guy who was going to go to the UK, what area should he visit in order to have the best girls? Um, Newcastle, <laughs> Essex, possibly, possibly. Uh, I mean, there th those are good areas. Like Newcastle is good because everyone's out partying. It's like crazy. The girls are all wearing next to nothing. The North is is a good time. Essex is good for the, a similar reason, and there there are some attractive hot girls there for sure. I mean, I just say come to London because then you get like an international buffet. You know, you're not just relying on the local talent. You get a little bit of everything. So that would be no, my, my advice. Money ball down but here. The whole, no, but the whole like, my whole thing was like, if you have a thing, like I do, like I have my thing with the flags. Like I've tried to get as many country flags as I can. So if yes. you were coming to get your like UK flag. Where yes. would you go to get the best experience possible from the UK, from local talent? Just one of the big cities, basically. I mean, Manchester is great. There's some hot girls there. You'll meet some beautiful girls there. London, the girls in Chelsea in London tend to be really hot. You know, the more affluent women here. So that's a really yeah. good area to go to. Um, French girls or, are sluts. Indeed. <laughs> or or um, possibly. Um, somewhere like somewhere like Manchester, or uh, I've mentioned Manchester, like Newcastle or Liverpool. Do you know what I mean? One of those big cities, you're gonna find attractive girls who are there to party. They want a good time. Yeah, Newcastle was good. I've been there a couple of times, and Newcastle was always good. Yes, I yes, actually did better in Newcastle than I did in London. Well, London's a bit snobby, you know, and you've got a lot of high value dudes here and stuff. So it's right. um, you know, well, here guys, we're coming up on two hours. Uh, a lot of these guys are never going to make it to the UK to begin with, so I figure we'll save them. We'll talk about this behind the scenes. Um, we'll start with Carl, then go clockwise down the line here. Give us some closing thoughts or some uh, something new on the go. I just kind of got really into the discussion with Troy here about what areas of Britain to hit up for objects. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm kind of overall, stuck on overall, that, the so answer, I, overall, the answer is no. But um, I'm but, just going to pass that right away. Carl's just cashing in on free consultations live on the air here. <laughs> oh, me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, well, first of all, I wanted to just say that, that um, I I think that when like, and this is something Troy said sort of keyed something for me, which is um, when you see women who are ridiculing guys or saying you got a little dick because you are threatened by a strong independent woman, which is something that's been going on. Like I said, all of these mantras, this boilerplate, it's boilerplate for a reason because it's been around for a long time. But the, the latent purpose of that is to remove men's authority. And the only men who should have authority are the guys who can like live it. The guys who can like actually back up their words with you know with actions, right? That's exactly why John went from being just this anonymous guy that he just met this one little pageant cooter girl on the you know one thing, <laughs> yeah, and then so suddenly he goes from being uh, another beta chump follower like the seventy thousand other girl other guys that she has to being somebody who she pays attention to. He left an emotional impact on her because he will not he doesn't hand over his authority he isn't yes dear right and that's what happens when like when women already have this <clears throat> impression well and, and remember this is a westernizing thing like i we've talked a lot about different cultures and i'm not saying that there's not differences there are but we are rapidly globalizing this as yeah. sort of the intersexual global sexual marketplace standard for women so if it hasn't reached your country yet it probably will at some point to some degree so what happens is we make men ridiculous and the reason why we make men ridiculous is because it removes their authority authority so what it's saying is i can make my own damn money i can provide my own security because hypergamy is alpha fucks and beta bucks if i can take care of the beta buck side and i'm proud and my personality and my ego is invested in you know taking care of the beta buck side even though i need men to actually help me take care of the beta buck side but i think i'm independent i think i'm strong and if you can't you can't get down with that you must be a beta well the only guys who are alpha are the guys who tell her no 
No, you're not. No, I'm going to mess with you. And what happens when you do that? You become the strongest man in the room. You become the, the strongest alpha she knows, and she imprints on that. And that's exactly to the letter what happened with John and this girl. And it's happened before with those other girls, too, on Twitch that one time. But they all fall I, down. It, it's, a, it's meant there's an intention there to remove authority from men. So when I talk about like how men today, it's 100% responsibility and 0% authority. That's what I'm talking about is men will not take authority. They will not, they don't have the balls to do it. They don't have, they really, in this day and age, you have nothing to lose by, by reassuming and reasserting your authority as a guy, because you say, well, I'll end up in jail. Okay. Well, you'll end up in jail, but you'll end up as a man and not a fucking pussy going to jail, which I don't think you're going to, because what happens is what happened with John, right? When you do that, when you have, when you have game, when you have, when you I can you know walk the walk and talk the talk kind of thing. So again, it's comply or goodbye. Okay. Well, goodbye. I got other, I got other options. I have, I have abundance. You manifest that in your, your actions and your thoughts and everything else. But remember that when women say you got a little dick who hurt you, uh, all of the standard bullshit that comes back that you that was just dozens of those responses in that one uh, Facebook uh, thread that I was we started the show with. If you go and you look at those, every single one of those has the latent purpose of removing authority from guys who that they, they should disqualify themselves. You should think the way I do, so you'll disqualify yourself from my. I, I don't have to bother with you. I'm more pragmatic because hypergamy has a time limit. There is a decay of women's sexual value. There's a decay. Women's sexual market value is perishable, and they know that. And it helps if you'll select yourself out of that whole equation before she even has to talk to you. So we can, you know, there's the indignation and everything else goes along with that. But really, it comes down to one thing, which is removing authority from you. If you can be convinced to give up your authority, it makes it that much easier for them. And that's why we have those social conventions. Hmm. What about you, T-Man? Uh, yeah, don't come to the UK. It's rubbish. <laughs> no. I'm only joking. I'm only joking. I mean, like, English girls get a bad rep, and it's it's a bit unfair because there are some beautiful English girls, absolutely for sure, some glorious uh, specimens, not least the Queen, um, and uh, going down with from there. Kate Middleton, you know, what a, what a gorgeous, virtuous princess, unlike uh, some other usurpers to the royal family that we've seen recently. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah, um, you know, London, the big cities obviously is where it's at. London, Manchester, Liverpool. Someone mentioned Swansea in the chat. I hear that's a rough night out, but that might be quite fun. Um, so yeah, uh, fill your boots in those places. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, head over to my channel on YouTube. Just type in Troy Francis and hit subscribe. Uploading loads of content over there at the moment. Really helps me to, if you subscribe, to build up the, the base and get the word out, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, also, if you look at pretty much any video on my channel, you'll see a link to my free email list. So do get on that email list uh, ASAP because I send out pretty much a free article Monday to Friday every day. So uh, jump on board that email list. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it from me. I'll see you guys on YouTube next week. Oh, do you, dude, even if guys got their women and that stuff in order, you're such a good writer. Your email list is worth it regardless. Yeah. Thanks, man. No, I appreciate that. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, no worries. All right. We're switched out to Salt Daddy. Lead us out. <laughs> so on Monday, there's uh, going to be a huge release with my course, Salt Online Dating. Um, you have to go to saltdaddy.net to get on the waiting list. There's uh, over 200 people or over 300 people on the list right now, actually. So it's going to be good. It includes uh, 10 two hour long webinars with myself. And we're going to teach you how to beat the algorithm, how to do everything A to Z. Also, uh, in 15 minutes on my channel, we're going to go live with Dude Party. We're going to talk about this whole southern california cancer thing that happened this whole cuties phenomenon oh jesus and i'll watch how, that <laughs> how this is like i'm going to show how like you 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 indoctrinate these young little girls and then they grow up to be these street walkers because we're going to talk about these two professional uh s girls that belong to the streets she sucked seven nba players dicks in a row and she talked about it freely and she talked about it in a bragging way on the no jumper podcast we're gonna talk we're gonna show like the duality between these two and how they're related and uh yeah you're gonna want to come on over so go to my channel uh we're gonna go live here in 15 minutes for dude party on my channel go ahead Ooh, then we'll finish here in one then uh just for me obviously i like the informal nature of it started a twitch channel we're crushing it over there john and i just finished a uh red morning there that's going to be the home for it now 
We'll put it onto YouTube on Sundays. Come on in, check it out. Honestly, it's more, this is like TV. That's like the radio. I think you'll absolutely love it. Anyways, wonderful time. Wonderful OG panel. It feels like it's 2019 again, man. I swear. <laughs> It was nice. Anyways, don't forget, Dude Party. Did you throw a link in the channel for that, John? Uh, or in the just, chat? Just type uh, Dude Party on YouTube or go to Modern Life Dating on YouTube and you'll find me. Trust All right. me just, just come find me. You will. You know how to find me. You guys can make it. Anyways, <laughs> get in on that. I'll catch you guys later. Cheers.